get in the zone i'm gonna get in the entertainment okay. mode in a second this is so funny why it's just funny just knowing that you stream fucking hours on end every single day and yeah. number one i want to say thank you for coming because obviously i know you stream today would you stream eight hours every day yeah usually but i only stream i only stream like five six hours a day the problem is that it's not that i stream all the time it's like well one you're far as fuck from you know? weho yeah yeah, I mean, that's like, that's a whole trip for me. And then two, my family's here. I've been spending a lot of time with them. Yeah. And when they're here for the holidays and stuff, like my mom is staying with me. Um, you know, they're always like, they always got some something going on yeah. at the house. So today we were doing like a gift exchange, like Christmas style. Yeah. Uh, so that was, you know, there's just a lot. Right away, this makes me think of when I go to like family gatherings, everyone's like, so how's this and how's that like? Cause obviously, you know, you're big in all this, this internet shit, obviously a huge streamer. Do your, do people in your family know about your success and do they ask you, do they talk to you about yeah, this no, shit? They, they know, they get it. They understand it. Are they like, what, what is it like knowing this person or meeting that person or does it ever get annoying? No, they don't care about that. They're like, they're old. I mean, I guess like the little, the little cousins, like they get stoked when they find out like I, I, I hung out with like uh, Mr. Beast or something, yeah. you know what I mean? But like, other than that, they don't. Yeah. They're too young, and then the rest of them are too old. So they have no clue what's going on. Yeah. How um, long have you been doing social media? How long have I been doing social media? I mean, I started uh, I started the Young Turks. Yeah. So that was when I first started doing social media stuff. I, I, originally, I wasn't even on camera. I was, like, doing off-camera stuff. I was doing biz dev stuff. And then for, I... For someone else on social media? No, for the Young Turks. Oh, okay. You know what that is? No. You have no idea what the Young Turks I've is? I've heard it. I was how reading long, about it. How yeah. long have you been on YouTube? How long uh, have you been on YouTube? You've been on YouTube nine for years? a minute. Nine years? Almost yeah. Two. TYT is like an old institution. They do news. They're like liberal. They do yeah. liberal news. But um, I started off there doing like back end stuff. How'd you get that opportunity though first? Let's take it back It's just that. nepotism. Straight nepotism. That's how you got the opportunity? Yeah. My uncle is uh, got it. The, the main host. I mean... It's a YouTube channel. It wasn't yeah. like, you know, it wasn't like CNN or anything. You know what I mean? They were, and I'm bigger than him now anyway. So, which is, I mean, th that's a crazy <laughs> thing to think about now. Like you, I mean, the kind of viewership you get over time and monthly is like a lot of these bigger networks even yeah. have. Does that ever make you feel like you have to like be a certain way or act a certain way or I don't know, deliver a certain message or does it create any sort of, I mean, hold? as far as like, editorial control goals no and I, I i always just think like i'm just gonna be myself i'm gonna say what i believe and i'm gonna do my research as far as like the accuracy uh of what i cover yeah that i care about that a lot that's that's something that i think is like pretty important because like for me there's a lot of people who rely on me for news aggregation there's a lot of people who rely on what i have to say for their news like that's where they're getting their news from so i do think about that a lot yeah um, and I openly stated, like, I'm biased. I know what my perspective is. This is my perspective. You might not agree with it. Here's why I believe it, though. Whereas, like, I think that's more honest than what CNN or Fox News does. Oh, for sure. Where they're like, oh, we're covering the news objectively. I'm like, no, you're not. It's impossible to cover the news objectively. That's not a real thing. Like, everyone has a perspective. Yeah. And they just hide it. I'd rather openly state what mine is, yeah. you know? I just find it. Has your, like, your, I guess because your main thing, your main stick is, like, your political commentator. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you consider that's true yeah yeah i'm an uh, entertainer like i mean I, I i try to be entertaining yeah and, and obviously funny. like if you were just a fucking fucking robot saying some yeah. shit, people be like not industry um but i guess has your has your uh, your idea of your i guess we'll call them beliefs or your viewpoint have they shifted or changed over time at all have they started somewhere and gone somewhere else or i think so yeah i mean like i think everyone's perspective changes over time like, I would say I was, like, way more bro -y back in the day. I mean, I still am to a certain degree. But I think I was, um, I definitely had, uh, it wasn't right-wing necessarily, but just, like, more edgy views. Like, I, I always wanted to be, like, funny. So I would just substitute, just like everybody else does, being edgy for, like, actual comedic talent. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, that has changed throughout time, I think. I, I had uh, transphobic opinions back in the day, too. These are things that I talk about a lot, too, yeah. because I, I like to use that as a opportunity for, like, 
educate others on how I changed my perspective and right. learned, you know what I mean? And how they can too. And, and how annoying it is when people constantly like point back to some shit that you've said like 12 fucking years ago to be yeah. like, huh, that's you. It's like, no, motherfucker, like you, you didn't get me. Like, yeah. I, I'm, you know, I think and, people get caught up in like, it's whatever they get you as when they get you that that's who you are. And then, or they'll like to go, if they don't like you. Then they'll go back to some shit and be like, well, you also were this. Yeah. It's just, it's really dumb because like everyone has had opinions that they don't agree with anymore. You know what I mean? Of that's like a part of human nature. If you don't grow, then the fuck are you doing? Yeah. If you don't change your mind on things, what are you doing? So that is something that I hate. I guess that's like one of the more unique sides of my coverage on issues and my coverage on politics in general is that like, you know, even though I'm on the left, I'm a leftist. I do think that we should be able to laugh at stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> like not everything has to be super serious. Yeah. And also on top of that, like be more understanding of people who have like uh, perspectives that are different. Yeah. That doesn't mean that it's like adequate or, or acceptable, but like, everyone's on a journey you know yeah this is the thing that i help I, them learn i really wanted to actually talk with you about because i just think in general um people who i guess tend to make their content like you about this political shit it's no matter what obviously i'm not saying you can't do this anyone can do whatever they want in this sense but it's all kind of divisive both ways right because it's if one side believes this is right it's like no one's ever going to be like we're all we could all play this fair, right? Because right now, like, I, I've been watching your stuff recently and I've been seeing the stuff, you're, you know, the opinion on, like, Elon Musk and this and that, right? I fucking hate Elon Musk. Really? Yeah. Well, so tell me why. Because I watch it and I understand a bit, but... I mean, he's such a petty, petulant man baby. Like, right off the bat. Like, he... Aside from the whole, like, reasons why I don't like him as a, as a boss, I don't think he's a good boss, you know what I mean? Like squashing unionization efforts at his factories like not abiding by basic safety protocols like osha violations and shit like that and also being a billionaire elon musk is the type of person that i'm supposed to love because he does things that i technically advocate for like every industry that he's in whether it be spacex and you know uh space travel technology like that is something that i love personally yeah. my brother is a, a uh, you know, he, he builds satellites. My brother does this for a living. Uh, it's something that I think is awesome. I love that. He works in renewable energy technically. He's building cars that are, you know, EVs. Yeah. He's an EV evangelist. I, I'm supposed to love that. That's a, I have no problem with the government taking subsidies, using subsidies to promote renewable energy. That's something I advocate for, right? Right. So like everything he's doing, technically I'm supposed to be on board with, which I am in a weird way, but he is so fucking unlikable, routinely shits on taxes, even though every single business venture that he's ever been involved in, that he hasn't been like pushed aside on so that that business makes him money, like PayPal. He has always- You're talking uh, about the ta massive tax breaks. Well, he loves the tax breaks. He shits on taxes in general. He's like overtly right wing from the jump. And now he just like openly says it. Right. Um, but back in the day, I could tell like he was just like saying a bunch of right wing shit. And I'd be like, this guy's right wing. And everyone would be like, how dare you say that? Elon Musk is a liberal. He loves EVs. <laughs> and now he just openly says it. But um, but it's uh, like even the way he has done uh, what he has done so far is, is very frustrating. Just because you know? he's used the system and then knocked the system or. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah, your your businesses would not survive without, you know, uh, carbon credits that you rely on because yeah. other other auto manufacturers are not developing electric vehicles or weren't developing electric vehicles thus far. So you're constantly running like, you know, you're, you're running a carbon credit operation pretty much because you're like, oh, well, I only make EVs. So other auto manufacturers would pay Elon Musk like almost a tax, you know what I mean? Right. So that they could take advantage of his carbon credits. Yeah. And, and that was the only reason why Tesla was kept afloat this entire time. Anytime they ever turned a profit, it was because of that. Tesla is also not seen as an auto manufacturer. It's seen as a tech company. So that's the reason why it's like 10X, 20X like Volkswagen, even though Volkswagen is an international company with a significantly larger fleet that didn't have a 98% recall. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it doesn't impact their stock price. So like that I hate too, because I don't like the stock market either. It's like an overvalued 
uh, you know, a, a garbage stock that is exclusively relying on a singular individual and how well he performs as a con man, like how charismatic he can be. Or he's not necessarily charismatic, but he has built a cult fan base, a he cult a following. And, and, uh, and I'm sure like there's plenty of... I'm sure there's some of you guys probably like Elon. I don't know. You probably like I, Elon. I love Elon. Yeah, everybody in the podcasting space loves Elon. I think he's sick. They're like, oh, he's so quirky. He's like Tony Stark. He's like, no, man. He's just like, he is in many ways kind of like Donald Trump, except Donald Trump is a performer. Donald <laughs> Trump Big is, time. Yeah, Donald Trump is charismatic as fuck. Donald Trump is funny as fuck. He's zesty. But you don't think, you don't think some of the stuff Elon like posts and talk about, I mean, it's funny. Like he, how he like. I think it's so, that's the worst part. I think it's so bad. It's just like so really? unfunny. But I feel like. We deify him because, like, he's so successful. He's so rich. So he must be, like, successful. Like, he must be funny, you know, you right? You don't like, like the I support the current things meme? The, but that's like, so it's funny, so dude. Basic. <laughs> it's so basic. It's so basic. It's like... That's why it's funny. It, but, but, like, he did the let that sink in. And it's like... <laughs> That stuff, come on. That's like how that, that's like 40 years old. You got to be like 40 years old to like that. That's like nine gag humor from like 2009. Like the first time someone made that joke, like even back then people on Reddit were probably shitting on it. Like, oh, this is lame. And, but there are a lot of people that like that. Yeah. You know, there's, it's not for me. So I want to ask you specifically, like, obviously like you, know, obviously you stand strong in a lot of your opinions. My question is like, why? Like, how did you get here? Like, why do you think there's mm -hmm. so much importance for you to stand and say, this is how I feel? Like, what what do you think it means? Like, what does it mean to you, right? Because, like, why are you doing all this? I'm curious. Because it's a very, that's like... That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I've always been, like... I guess, like, I've always been annoyed by bullies. You know what I mean? Even from a young age. I think that just, like, kind of stuck with me. Where I feel like if I, if I think something is unjust, I just can't shut the fuck up about it. So yeah. that's that's just how... I operate for the most part. And like, it's funny because people will be like, bro, you're rich now. You know what I mean? You're fucking rich. Why are you talking about like poor people? It's like, yeah, but you know, my attitude hasn't changed on it. Yeah. You know what I mean, I was broke and I was still talking about poor people. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. what do you want me to do now that I'm rich? Be like, all right, I'm done with this shit. Peace. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't know. I think like I'm a profoundly fortunate person. I think we are in this space. Oh my God. The yeah. People that have made it in this space. We are all insanely lucky. And I think we constantly overlook that fact. Like a lot of people overlook that fact. They want to make it seem like it's just, you know, there, it isn't just luck that like we are, were ordained to be in this circumstance or something. Or sometimes people will, I guess, overemphasize hard work, even though hard work is, of course, an incredibly important factor. Like, right. I mean, I stream eight hours a day, you know, not many people want to do that. Yeah, that's that's insane because honestly like i even know just that audience is like the most toxic fucking audience yeah. on the internet Twitch yeah I, I i mean i whip it pretty hard though like that's the thing um if someone is being overcorrective and and saying like well that's actually kind of problematic why are you platforming this person boom i'll fucking i'll be like you cannot platform someone with a larger platform shut the fuck up uh, and i'll ban them <laughs> so like if someone from the left is like being over the top left and 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 like doing uh, things that I do not want to associate with like being a good leftist, I will yell at them and I will clap them. I will make sure that they shut the fuck up and I will make sure that my community understands that that's not acceptable. If someone's like, that was problematic. Don't laugh at that. I'll, you know, I'll moderate it. Yeah. I'll be like, shut up. So then, so this is, I'm curious now. Cause like, I've seen the way you spoke about Elon Musk and his relationship with owning Twitter and how he is like punitive towards people who are like, you know, they're doxing him and all this stuff and the journalists and the links and all this shit. But they're not doxing him. That's bullshit. They're not. That's crazy. First of all, FAA information is public for everybody. Yeah. So every time you take a flight, that's technically literally like it's just post 9-11. We got fucking, you know, missiles on the sky with people inside of it. Like everybody knows yeah. that is just always there is no way to overcome that. There's no way to override that. And I don't think billionaires should get special privilege. But on here's that the regard. interesting thing. Maybe that's. Just like you sat and you said, you view this, you personally view with that person, let's say who's saying it's more left and it's too left. And you're like, yo, boom, you're out of here. That's still your personal preference and your personal opinion to make that assessment. No, no? but what I'm saying right now is fact though. Like, it, it I'm not just, saying what you're saying. I'm not saying what you're saying about the yeah. air traffic is not facts. I'm saying the opinion related to like it being okay or not on the guy's platform. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Elon you know doesn't saying? think it's okay to have it on his platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I understand that. I know that that's his personal preference. I think that's bullshit. Yeah. I think it's bullshit to be like, 
I should get special privilege. You shouldn't know where my private jet is. Like you shouldn't know where private jets are at any given moment. I think that's kind of weird, especially after all the Jeffrey Epstein stuff. Like, I think we should know where the fuck billionaires well, I mean, are flying. That in general, no one ever figured that out. That whole thing in general just became this, like, no one's going to talk about yeah, it that's thing. What, that's what fucking happens when, you know, maybe you may or may not be working with the state department. I'm just saying what happened to Jeffrey Epstein's tapes where the fuck, like the New York, the, the, uh, Southern District of New York, like they raided Jeffrey Epstein's mansion, which Elon Musk's brother used to stay at, by the way. Kimball Musk literally dated, and I think he might have even been married to one of Jeffrey Epstein's girls who used to live with Jeffrey Epstein. So remember that one. That's a little interesting tidbit, interesting factoid about Elon Musk, or at least Kimball. And uh, anyway, we never found out about the tapes with yeah. people's names on it. I want to know what the fuck is that? Yeah. And then they, this, this Very Maxwell strange. girl, and then it's just like, they're like, Billy oh, Maxwell, we're yeah, not going to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. It was supposed to be a star slotted cast on that, on the deposition or on the, on the court trial. And what so happened? they just wiped this shit away. I don't get it. I think it's going to be one of those things where, uh, as matters of like all, all like espionage, CIA, FBI matters tend to get declassified like 40 years later, yeah. 50 years later, unless it's like the JFK assassination, I guess, which is kind of a hot button Didn't they just talk right? about that to, yeah. Like recently? Yeah, they like released some new files on how they actually did know who Lee Harvey Oswald was and how they were actually tracking who Lee Harvey Oswald was. And like he was involved with the CIA, basically, something like that. Yeah. I'm not super familiar with that, yeah. so I won't um, talk on it any further, but I think it's like the 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 summary of it is like they were like oh yeah we did know who he was actually we lied originally yeah it was like that's the crazy thing about all this shit is just like there's so much just seems like smoke and mirrors yeah. and, and i guess my thing I, I i i don't like getting political i don't like talking about politics because like i think it's all bullshit and i think everyone's just in invested in their selves and they're putting money in people's pockets and whatever side and like whatever suits whoever and they're just doing that i think generally speaking that's the truth I agree with you. I think that there is no sides in general. It's just money. Yeah. And that people with money will, you know, they'll they'll give 49% to one side and 51% to the other. All right, guys, quick interruption from the podcast. Uh, I know this is not the normal setting, uh, but anyway, it's very important. Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a sponsor to the show. Hallelujah. Thank you to the Blue Chew um, gods. If you have ever wanted, I, I don't know how else to say this, but like, if you want like a 99% surefire chance that like, you're going to be like 100% bricked up, like just completely bricked up, like a, like then Blue Chew's for you. That's right. Do not forget it. I'm telling you. Personally, I'm a fan. I'm a big believer. And I think if you guys have ever thought like, yeah, I want some help in the bedroom or whatever, if you want, you know, that extra, then give it a shot. Oh, so by the way, they got some chewables, some mint chewables. I mean, you could be bricked up and minty. It's like, why are we not pausing the video, going to bluechew.com, typing in code Brad, actually trying this for free and just paying $5 for shipping. So again, if you want to try it for free, just pay $5 in shipping, go check out promo code Brad. Do not forget to use promo code Brad. Moral of the story is go to Blue Chew right now. Try it for free. All you gotta do is pay that shipping. Let's go back to this podcast. And then they'll sit around and be like, oh my God, I'm such a liberal or oh, I'm a Republican. It's all fucking bullshit. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what they care about is advancing the interests of the wealthy. Whether it be deregulation, whether it be tax cuts, whether it be, I don't know, taking money away from uh, fixing fucking potholes and giving it to the police. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be whatever the fuck rich people want out of the system because it's a system designed by the rich for the rich. That's actually quite a big part of what I talk about. Yeah. That is what I'm frustrated with. That's why like, like Elon Musk gave to Republicans a lot when yeah. he was giving the liberals a lot too. That's even this fucking SBF guy. Remember the, the FTX, yeah. Sam bank run yeah. fraud or whatever the fuck this guy, this crypto guy, he, everyone was like, Oh, he's giving so much to the Democrats, which of course he was, uh, -huh, yeah. because those were the guys who were going to set up, you know, the, those Democrats were the ones who were going to set up like some kind of crypto regulation that benefits him. Right. He yeah. wanted to do regulatory capture for cryptocurrency. Okay. And then it came out that he was giving the Republicans too. <laughs> like he was, he was juicing both sides. Yeah. And it always is like that because both parties advance the interests of the wealthy 100 yeah. percent so it's like i guess i guess my question to you then is like as like a you know someone who talks about this all this stuff like pretty much daily what's what's the point then if there's no like question. if there's no it's just 
it's just all defi like divisive by nature. Yeah. Like everything about it is like whether you're here or there, you believe this or that. It's just it's like constantly just like a, some sort of argument between like my I believe this and you're wrongfully believing that and people are just attacking each other. Yeah, I um, I think that a society prospers when old men plant seeds for trees they will never sit in the shade of. This is my motto. This is my mantra. This is what I believe in. I think building a better society, even if you are not going to see the fruits of your labor immediately, is key. So that's why I promote the ideas that I promote, believing that even if there's marginal improvement that is like bettering people's lives and their immediate material conditions in the short term, or even if you're building a mechanism of, of organizing, like a mechanism of pushback against both parties, uh, in the short term, uh, that will develop into something that's more prosperous in the long term, I believe. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, it, it is hard to maintain uh, some kind of revolutionary optimism yeah. it, when you see how awful everything is all the goddamn time. But um, that's 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 what I believe. I think that, like, the system is designed this way for a reason, and it's very successful. Um, but, uh, you know, there are things you can do. And I just look to... In the short term, at least, more successful organizations of society. I look to social democracies in Europe. I see like free healthcare. You know, they can do it. Why the fuck can't we? Money. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's money, but like we make a lot of money. Yeah. You know what I mean? We have a lot of money. And I think that we can change that. I mean, sure, we can't change that immediately, but we can at least like organize locally and uh, put people in positions of power that have similar, you know, like-minded attitudes that also do want, you know, free health care for people. That's just one issue. Uh, you can organize your workplace to make sure that you have a labor union so that you can defend yourself when your bosses are like, fuck off, you're working through Christmas. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Um, those are things I, I, I think are valuable. And in the long term, if that happens on a larger scale, on a big enough scale, then you now have a, a group of people as we historically have had uh, to to scream at the Democratic Party and say, we're not going to fucking vote for you if you don't do this shit. Because right now we don't have anything. Right now it's all wedge issues, right? It's all bathroom bills or it's all fucking, you know, there's one 12 year old that's trans that is, you know, doing varsity swimming in Ohio in the entire state, which is why men can't play with women. It's like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? No one gives a shit about this. I, like, I know, especially in the podcast circuit, people always say, like, oh, what I care about the integrity of sports is like, bro, come on. You don't watch women's sports. Like, please you don't know, tell me fucking... you fucking sit there and watch women's sports. Don't tell me you sit there and you watch varsity. Like, you, you, <laughs> you really you go to the varsity swim meet? Like, that's where you're going to? That's what you care about? Like, no, it's just it like icks you out a little bit. It like weirds you out. So you're like politicizing that issue but it's not really a significant thing at all. It's significant for the trans person. It's significant for all those trans people who just want to like survive. You know what I mean? They're not like yeah. cheating. They're not like trying to cheat so they can like win the fucking varsity track meet. You know what I mean? They're just, they just want to be trans people. They want to be normal with of like course. the rest of society. Um, but now they're like the biggest thing. They're the biggest talking point. Was well, it just, it, it's just a, it's a, it's a tool. Issue. Yeah. It's a way to divide people. Yeah. That's just how it works. I mean, even the fucking governor of Utah was like, and Utah is not exactly known as like a liberal save haven, you know what I mean? It's Mormon paradise over there. Even the governor of Utah was like, I looked into the details when, when a bill came through the state legislature. He wrote, he vetoed it. Uh, an anti-trans like sports bill came through the legislature. He vetoed it because he was like, there's one girl in the entire fucking state of Utah who's like 13 years old. And you guys wrote this bill to like, you know, what drive this little girl to suicide? Like what the fuck is wrong with you guys? He's like, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm a conservative, but this is ridiculous. I'm not voting for this. You know, I'm not yeah. signing this in the law. It, it's because ultimately it is about that, but we make it be like the largest issue. You know, we yeah. have to talk about that. We have, meanwhile, all these motherfuckers are stealing money out of your pockets. Yeah. You know, they're taking your tax dollars and spending it on whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, that's, the, that's the thing that's frustrating to me is like just knowing it. And it's like, uh, is, there a, is there a world in which this is different? Yeah. Or is it just like a forever just a circle? I mean, in the short term, I don't even think in my lifetime it'll change for the better immediately. But I, yeah. but I have to believe that it will eventually, you know? Yeah. 
Have you ever taken mushrooms? Yeah. Nice. I like mushrooms. Have you ever had ayahuasca? I've never done ayahuasca. I used to, the thing is, I used to smoke weed all the time. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then I fucking came out to California and these dudes out here. The like, weed's I mean, strong. 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Like 10, 11 years ago, these dudes were just smoking some crazy shit. I don't know what the fuck they were smoking, you know? And they were also like, uh, putting like hash oil on the outside of it too. Keef, yeah. Yeah. Keef and hash oil, yeah. And it was like, I didn't know what the fuck I was smoking, but it would just like fuck me up. It started getting me really paranoid. Yeah. And also it was really hard to maintain a good diet while smoking because I love eating. Yeah. I can't stop eating. Yeah. You're, you're a big guy. Yeah. You're actually probably one of the biggest content creators I've ever met. Yeah. To I'm be fair. 6'4", 255 right now. I'm trying to lose again, but you know it's hard my parents here in the holiday season yeah we were talking we were on when i was on we were live i guess on on h3's pod and you popped in and we started talking about the liver king and this whole apology video and stuff yeah but uh you were talking a little bit about trt and like testosterone and all this stuff is that something you'd be interested in in doing eventually yeah yeah like not right now because i mean i don't know i take i take propecia for your for hair. my hair really yeah. but you have so much fucking hair but that's why i take it because i don't want to lose it <laughs> what the fuck uh, Wait, you take a pill yeah doesn't that fuck up you don't fuck your sex drive or anything because so, that's uh, normal. when i when i took like one full i used to take one full pill it started making me a little depressed so i started just taking half a pill instead but it like it lowered my libido to just like one nut a day you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah hold on to, but Yo, before that was it was funny. worse no Hold before on. before it was insane i like how you quantified your libido to a nut yeah Yo. one nut a day oh that was good or, or sometimes too but like but it was a good <laughs> thing like i think it was a good thing that my libido was lowered a little bit bro for that's sure. comedy so what was it prior to propecia i don't even know <laughs> it was uh, i was crazy <laughs> oh shit so, so so i i like that aspect of it it doesn't happen to everyone yeah and i don't think like I mean, I, I, it could have been the pro sure It could have been the fact that I was getting older anyway. But like, yeah. I mean, I, I think I have a pretty healthy sex drive still. Yeah. And uh, I would say it's more healthy now. <laughs> it's, but it's more, more, more uh, manageable. Yeah, more manageable. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have a girl anything in your life? Sometimes. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. Fair. Um, it's just like, it. I like to keep things a little private, at least in that sector of yeah. my life because so many stalkers yeah and also it's like fucking nuts i'm really curious like how the fuck you could have a relationship streaming that many hours every day because that seems like one of it the works. hardest things to balance yeah i mean it works if it works it works but uh like i said the reason why i don't talk about that sort of stuff ever or relationships in general since i started streaming yeah. at all is because like it's pretty crazy yeah like people because like people in that side both street on the streaming side a lot of stalkers, a lot of harassment. Um, that happens all the time. But then also on top of that, I'm political. So uh, oh, in that yeah. field, it's like, oh, everything is fair game. Like, I'll dox your mom. I'll like, fucking dox your your family. A little more vindictive. Yeah, it's really fucked up. I mean, yeah. I, I get death threats. All I've been getting death threats for the past ten years. You know what I mean? Fuck. And I don't I don't want to put anyone through that, especially not normies like that aren't aware yeah. of that world. You yeah, know? no, I get it. That makes sense. But anyway, so the working out stuff, you, do you train consistently or is this like, are you like the H3 thing where you're like, you don't, you don't believe in it? No, no. I, I train consistently. I lost a lot of weight originally. I think, I guess like when I was 24, 23, I lost like 80 pounds over the course of a year. Um, what the f so you were overweight, overweight. I was 320 pounds. I was very fat. Oh shit. I was very flabby. And then lost a lot of weight. I put a lot of muscle on. I got a six pack for the first time in my life. I could dunk for the first time in my life. These were all goals that I had. And it truly changed my perspective on like what I can accomplish. Yeah. Like it, it changed my life for the better in every avenue, not just like weightlifting and working out because that was the, I think that was like a goal that I had my entire life and being able to accomplish it in my own, through my own means made me feel like, Oh shit. Like if I work really hard, like I could achieve whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. You know, I applied that to pretty much everything now. And, yeah. uh, that was, that was huge. And then during, well, I got knee surgery and that kind of like made me yo-yo a little bit. And then I lost it again, you know, went up to like 240, went back down to 220, 230. And then I, and then COVID happened. Yeah. And I it's moved a great in, time. Yeah. It's fucking awful. I, I so moved my mom in with me cause I didn't want her to be alone. 
and then you know i'm just eating all day in front of the computer all day all my muscle atrophied like and at first i didn't even realize i was like gaining weight because like my muscle was going away and i was putting on fat but you can put on a lot more fat than muscle yeah. and, and pretty much stay the same on the scale but yeah. like think about this i'm sitting for like 12 13 hours a day in front of the computer not moving at all yeah like not even sit like sedentary at that point it's just like you're comatose all my muscle atrophied um i began to get really fucking fat so depressed so like i couldn't move like i couldn't move my body in the ways that i was used to so once i got the vaccine you know i'm gay now i get the vaccine nice, i nice. get the gay vaccine you know <laughs> I, i'm you know all of a sudden i'm like oh shit um immediately <laughs> I, I i gained like a little bit of confidence to like go because i was a little worried like i never got covid and i was i was worried about you know giving it to my mom okay who is older so i got the vaccine and i had a little bit more confidence she got the vaccine i was a little bit more secure in like being able to go outside and being gay it's all and, good. and being gay yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and and working out again um so that's when i started working out seriously again Interesting. but it's been hard like it, it is it's harder to like get back to your old self your peak physique yeah. when you're fucking 31 years old it is harder yeah test would help that's what i know you'd fucking love it bro yeah but also like i don't want to fucking i don't want to lose my hair <laughs> what yeah I? but so are you already predisposed to losing it you think like yeah you, no uh, i because my hairline was receding that's why i started taking propecia you know what? i i do the um the spray on stuff what is that the finasteride medoxy oh yeah I, I do that too oh you do both yeah i do both you oh, know you, shit. Can, you know they made the ro so that's rogaine basically yeah uh which i think works in like 33 percent of men and if it works for you, you're great. If it doesn't, you're fucking cooked. Yeah, you're done. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, but now they have that in edible form too. Apparently, that like works, yeah, which is I'm weird. Not, I don't. I don't want to ingest it. You don't want to nah, take anything. Fuck no. 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 Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Turkey and get that fucking. You want to get the? Yeah. Why? What's your? Let me see your. Let me see your situation. It's not that bad. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't like it though. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know, yeah. I know what it's, it's like. Trust me, you got a full head of hair, and you're like, you're still taking that shit. Yeah, I mean, but like, it's receding. You <laughs> Barely, I mean? bro. I mean, I know that's why I started taking the drugs. Barely, <laughs> that's actually crazy. Wanna, yeah, I didn't want to go crazy. That's when you're supposed to take it. Yeah, like that's when true. That's actually noticed, true. Yeah, when you first I notice it receding, um, it's funny. Fucking, what's his name? More plays, more dates. Yeah. Derek. Before he like popped off, he did a video on my finasteride usage like years ago. Yeah. It was like one of the older videos on his channel when he had like 20,000 subs or something. Damn, yeah. Yeah. Cause I was talking about it on stream when I first started taking it. And he said the same thing. It's like when you first notice it, that's when you're supposed to take yeah, it. Yeah. I wish I did it sooner. I yeah, fucked see, up. you would have you would have done it. I know. Probably would have had a nice full head of hair. <laughs> no, speaking of speaking of years ago, it was why so the funny. fuck aren't scientists figuring that shit out, bro? I, but I okay. To be fair, I was reading something that they were saying that like they're close to like really figuring that they out. They say that every fucking but I, five years, bro. Oh, but there has to be a way to do it. Honestly, it just sounds like it's another money making scheme. To if not that was it out. the case, then motherfuckers like LeBron wouldn't have to go back and get hair transplants. Every bro, season. I would legit give a percent of my like income to fix my hair. See, that's a huge deal. I swear to God. It's like dick shit and hair shit. I swear to it's God. It's just like the two things yes. holding fellas back. No yes. matter what happens, okay? How the fuck have they not solved this stuff? I don't I don't I think it's just the endless amount of money. That's why they just why would they solve it when they can just keep pumping that? Viagra can't be making that much money. Bro, you know what I mean? All those but Viagra, like, Blue Chew, all that shit's making dumb money. Yeah, but like Blue Chew's like relatively new, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, that's the problem. Cialis, that's all the that problem shit. with capitalism. See, you you see it too. It's like a cure is a one-time solution so you can't make money off of a cure right but you can treat an illness yeah. over the course of a long period of time so like nobody gives a fuck yeah i just that you one know? i wish man i would legit empty my bank account for that that's what i'm saying it's like but then that's a one-off and yeah. it, they can they can hook you on anything else for you know and they can hook you on other shit permanently. Yeah. Anyway, so it's funny. I DM'd you to, to get you on the pod. And then I looked back. I was like, this motherfucker DM'd me in yeah. 2016. About like, it seemed like we were talking about lockers or some shit. Like I don't know. Some I guess, shit I marina. Think I was replying to your, your stores. Post, yeah. I think. Yeah. How, I how think did you, you find me years ago then? 2016 would have been like almost even before I started to blow up. Yeah. Yeah. Because you were, you're like a fitness influencer. Yeah. That's, that's probably why. Because I was like, I was really into fitness. And that's what it was. It was like, 
there was a bunch of dudes I followed. I don't even know what the fuck they do now. All the old people that I used to follow back in the day from fitness, like aside from you, have kind of like dropped off the map. I don't even know what happened. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day, except for, uh, I guess, Juji. Uh, Juju Mafufu or whatever yeah. the fuck. Yeah. What's his name? The, he's Juju. crazy. Yeah. He's still, he's still popping off. But there was a... Uh, like I was thinking about this. There was a guy named Brad Animal or something. The Brad Animal. Brad Castleberry. I, was it Brad Castleberry? Like, what yeah. does he do? Is he still is he still making content? He's doing the same kind of shit. I just don't know to any degree newer. Oh, I, don't, okay. I don't know anything else. He would do the box jumps, right? Was that yeah, him? I was doing box jumps. He w- he was pretty strong, but everyone say he had fake weights. Is that the same guy you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah they were exactly. saying he was doing fake weights. Yeah, was Rich Piana did? back in the day, RIP. Okay, well, Rich Piana is the GOAT. Yeah, no, he's he is. a legend. Yeah, he is. Yeah, Big he, time. you know, gone too soon, unfortunately. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I was, that, that, yeah, people like that. So you were, guess, you were into fitness like that then? I mean, I, I liked it. I yeah. liked it, yeah. I mean, I would I would follow everything. You still follow people now, like any stuff in fitness? Now, dude, there's this the one fucking dude I follow is uh, his name is Brad too. I think the the fifty four year old like the the natty god. Oh, he oh, was like fuck. he was like a cross country runner or something, and then like at at the age of thirty four, decided to like start working out. Yeah, fuck. He, what's his name? Damn. I'm yeah. gonna find it. Yeah, no, was was Joe? I think Joe Rogan was talking about this guy. Yeah, 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 he yeah. was. That dude is crazy. So, dude, when are we gonna get you on fucking gear, man? Dude. Get you in shape. We gotta get <laughs> this you at the gym. This is what this podcast is about, so bro. I bought what you the here fuck? for that. Well, because you talked about it. You were like, you were like, no, I've I've always been like, I've always been super open minded towards uh, testosterone, but I'm very like, I have a very addictive personality. Oh so yeah, I'm, that's tough. I'm like worried about like the highs I'm gonna feel off of that, and then not want to like ever. Yeah, stop cycling because you know it's never the same that's the thing once yeah. you know you know and it's I, like good pussy and i yeah and i know because like you know i know a lot of my friends in college fucking were on all manner of steroids you know hgh yeah. everything so like uh, i know i know what it's like yeah. fucking feels great especially that's the craziest part these motherfuckers were doing it at like 18 like that but the, that's that's fucking that's too young. that that is definitely super young too young because it's like what are you doing? Your body is like built. Your body is already like has a built in steroid. It's just being 18. Yeah. And you're also just not even, you're not even able to maximize yourself yeah. even at that point. But yeah, I think it's, having... it's, it's really, really popular nowadays for kids to get on younger because of this whole social media yeah. viewpoint. Cause everything is so like kids doing everything younger just in general. And it's like yeah. people see these influencers or things that they think is possible that like, they had never seen because like when I was that age, I didn't see any of that shit. It was like I was reading magazines. I'm 33, so I'd be um, looking yeah, at same. I'm 31. Yeah, I'd be looking at magazines. Yeah, we had bodybuilding forums, bro. We didn't exactly. have shit. We had Ziz. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> bodybuilding forums. It was like T Nation was a big one. I'd be on, and then it would just be like just random forums to learn about shit. But now Honestly, it's like though, that's kind of worse because like then you have like some random dumb motherfucker in ohio writing stuff like he's the authority you know what i mean you don't know how to fact check it so you're yeah, like he's got yeah. the avatar that yeah, was it yeah you're like this guy's probably smart he looks yeah. jacked in his avatar yeah, this yeah, one exactly. photo now at least you got like you got like guys like you know nippard who's you know very yeah. good and very smart you have a lot of you have a lot of like really good content creators now that are thoughtful and and intelligent and yeah. then and then you have like funny guys like liver king who i think are they're more content creators than like actual fitness people. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he's not giving you exercises to work on. He's not, he's not telling you like correctives. Yeah. He's he, like he, a character, man. Yeah. He's like a character. A, like and a really, as a character, I think that's fine. Yeah. But like, you know, just be a little bit more truthful about your usage. Yeah. Cause what did you think about that? I mean, obviously like we talked about a little bit on that pod, but in general, I, I think it sucks. Cause it's just like majority of people don't know. They just don't know. They're going to believe what someone says. And then the people who are in it, who are closer to it, no. You could see very clearly, hey, what's going on here? Yeah. No, anyone that has, like, actually worked out knows two things. And these are two things that people, uh, that normies don't fucking understand. One, that dude's definitely on gear. Two, it's still, like, incredibly hard to look like him, even if you are on gear. So he's putting a lot of fucking effort in. Yeah. If these two things were more clearly communicated to the masses, I feel like people would have a better understanding because 
you you literally think like oh you do a, you do steroids and automatically and you're, you're fucking Mr. Jack. Olympia yeah no like that's not how that works at all what yeah. the fuck? it's almost like the same way girls think oh if I start training I'm gonna be just like a dude yeah that's the funniest thing women always think like yeah I'm gonna have the fucking well defined jawline it's like no unless you do HGH and unless you do fucking yeah. steroids you're not gonna have the the classic female fitness jawline okay that 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 doesn't come from doing you know booty boot yeah, camp or whatever no, bro and it also takes <laughs> so long to build muscle just in general even yeah. even even obviously on gear happens faster but like in general training i mean people just yeah. have this i don't know maybe it's just like i said everything's always from the viewpoint of looking out someone that has it and then they just go well they just do these things and that's it so if i do these things that for some reason people think i'm gonna do it for fucking five weeks it's just gonna be my reality and it's just not even close to the case yeah um, not at all there's I mean, plenty of dudes that look like shit that do steroids they're just not eating right they're not working out they don't know how to work out it's not gonna happen to you don't worry you know what's an interesting thing i think kumail about and johnny should come out though the fuck is that who who kumail and johnny who the fuck's that the the fucking dude from kumail and johnny he's the he's the pakistani dude who like became like a marvel guy but he was on like what is it eternals or something Oh, I didn't see this. I, was, I didn't I, watch the movie either, but like he's like Jack now. How do you not know Kumail and Johnny? He I, went from like the fucking like uh I have to you know, the nerdy the nerdy brown dude, the nerdy Pakistani dude pull that to up. like Sylvie, pull that up. Show insanely me on your phone. svelte. And he says it's because he like worked out a lot or whatever. You know what I find funny about that concept is like just like success in general, like people look at stuff and they go, Oh, this is all you did to get there. And then they try to put in the work to get there and they realize it's so much harder, but then they don't they can't apply that same concept to This is what he looks like now. Okay. But he Oh, hundred percent on But you. have you seen what he used to look like? No, nah, but I could already look at his bicep veins. It was, it's just, yeah, his vascular is out of you control. Don't, your veins don't get thick like that. That's just not normal. For most people. Yeah. For most people. I mean, here, this is an older photo of him. That's actually kind of like makes it look like it would be more of a natural transition but like it's nah he used to look so different dude he was like and it happened over the course of like half of a year yeah i mean it's just not it's hollywood hollywood yeah. does this shit all the time i've been doing this forever yeah he looks great fuck it but i mean also like i feel like that definitely shaves that definitely shaves like five to five years from the top of your life nah i don't think that many no i don't know but i mean i was gonna say i i would take it look <laughs> yeah i would take it no yeah i mean he's definitely <laughs> like nothing no definition i Just, think too i think too that the bigger thing like especially for these kids if they're listening to this and they're like actually thinking about or, or considering or doing any of this shit it's just like blood work. People don't realize how important that stuff is because people don't realize actually what's happening in their body. I know we talked a bit a little bit on H Street Spot, but I think any any conversation I tend to talk about, if I ever talk about steroids, I always try to talk about actually looking at yourself, whether before you're going to get on or if you're on or while you're on, like you need to be aware of what's happening, how your body's like adapting to it to know whether it's safe or not for you. Otherwise, you're just like shooting in the dark. And I, yeah. I think I think not enough people hear that kind of stuff when it comes to this stuff because I think they just think, oh, I'm going to get it. I want to do it. And, and even on the same concept, like getting it, like it's just going to happen fast without realizing like there's all these other things that you should think about before you just jump in. Because that's like the worst thing is like, I feel like there's probably so many like kids that's in gyms and their bros are like, bro, take this shit. And they're like taking probably in, in for them copious amounts of shit that is just not even necessary to get what they want. So there's just, there's just something to be said about it. Just anytime I talk about it, I always try to preface it a little bit. That's why I believe in legalizing anabolic steroids, legalized steroids across the board. I'm not even kidding. I've been saying this for years. Yeah. I think, I think, I think it'd be better off if we legalized it and then we had, you know, better, more adequate, transparent medicine surrounding this yeah. process. Because yeah. right now, like a lot of rich people do it. Most of them, I'd say. Yeah. It, all athletes do it. A yeah. lot of rich people do so it. So LeBron does it. <coughs> no. <laughs> no. I would not say that. Yo, that's what you said all athletes. He's not an athlete. I mean, then. Most most athletes do it. Most Actually, athletes, I mean, okay. maybe he might have he might have done it too. I think like a lot of I feel like a lot of athletes probably do it when they're younger. I mean, I don't I know. I think older is when you do it more so. No? You think they you think that you're just for older? longevity. Because like probably. these things are, it's not even, it's not like, I'm not saying LeBron or any athlete would take something because they want to be like a bodybuilder, but like just like tendon strength, ligament strength, like recovery. Yeah, that's, that's a part of the, uh, that's the aspect that people don't talk about with respect to the series is like recovery. Yeah, huge. You know? And also like, mental, like you'd, you'd, you'd actually would be surprised how like actually mentally like focusing it can be. Like it changes your, almost like your idea of what's possible because you just, there's that much more, um, I guess you'd say like, uh, 
believing in yourself, just a self-belief. Yeah, you, you get more confidence from testosterone coursing through your veins. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd rather marginally move the needle by like making healthier choices, moving around, sleeping more, eating a better diet. Yeah. It's not going to be the same as like steroids, but still. Yeah, of course. I'd yeah. rather keep that going for as long as I can. And then until it get, and when it gets to a manage, unmanageable level, then I'll do then I'll Unmanageable do like level. Doctor, in the, what? Unmanageable level in the sense of. It, like, I just feel myself slipping to a degree where it. it's like, I just don't feel happy. Yeah. And, and depressed and all this shit. Because yeah. like. I want to, I still believe that I can uh, do it without steroids. Yeah, you can. Absolutely. At this age, I'm only, you know, I'm only 30. Well, that's, that's something too that's important is like, like you said, the sleep, the water, the food, all this stuff is, is if you're, if you're like flopping that already, it just makes no sense. You might as well nail this, see how that treats you. And then, you know, if you want to go further, by all means. The next level. yeah. Yeah. So I got a question for you. What, what is like. What do you enjoy the most out of all this stuff now? Because obviously, like, you do this every day. How long have you been doing this every day? Um, so I started full-time in 2020, and uh, and then COVID happened. I uh, I left the Young Turks and decided, you know, I'm going to do this on my own. And um, I started doing it full-time in 2020, and I was, like, streaming, you know, eight hours, ten hours every day. And then uh, I was supposed to follow Bernie Sanders' campaign around the country. And then COVID happened. So that destroyed that plan. And then my dog died in the beginning of uh, COVID too. So I'm like sitting in a fucking one bedroom by myself in the middle of West Hollywood, depressed as fuck, can't see anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Freaking the fuck out. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just wake up and do this. Should have came to Zoo Culture to work yeah. out. <laughs> I didn't know the Zoo Culture was open, but I probably wouldn't have done it regardless. Because I, I was very, like, I, I followed the protocols pretty to a T. Damn, I didn't at yeah. all. I, I know. I'm, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Many people did not. Um, many people did not and then complained about it. They're like, oh, man, these fucking lockdowns are crazy. It's like, bro, you live in Alabama. Like, nothing locked down. <laughs> Chill, okay? Definitely not like LA. Like, our shit locked down. For, for, for real, sure. for real. When I, when I went outside, like, when I went outside the first time to get groceries, it was crazy. There was, like, no one out. The best part was driving on the freeways. That was pretty I chill. was like, yo, this is insane. That like, was pretty good, yeah. Yeah, you can get anywhere in, like, actual time you should, like, 20-something minutes. Man. Yeah, it was, that was the only time. Yeah, it was just, like, you and Uber drivers, you know? Fucking Uber but, um, but that's that's when I like really just I streamed forty two percent of the year in twenty twenty. Fuck. So Holy that's like shit. literally forty two percent of the entire year I was live in front of a camera. That's insane. So I was just sleeping and streaming. That's it. Was it worth it? Yeah. In all sure. aspects of your life? Yeah. No, for sure. Because I had nothing else going on. The only yeah. thing I am upset about is that like I, you know, dropped the ball on weightlifting and working out. That was the only that was the only part. And 2021, that's when I really started getting weight. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, I would say that was the bad part. Yeah. And then the second half of 2021, I started working out again. So, so I guess my question is like, what, what do you enjoy the most about this now? Like, cause like you can't do this forever. Right. I mean, obviously I'm not trying to, I'm not, you're not telling your audience you're going to stop Twitch stream or anything, but like, no, that's what everyone always says. But it's like, because of the nature of my work, I kind of could just cause <laughs> like, it, cause it's kind of just like politics. Yeah, I mean, you're kind of sitting and talking, and it almost reminds me of a, a very long live podcast. It's just kind of engaging with the audience. Yeah, no, it, it is like it is like old school talk radio. Yeah, that is what it is, and um, I do think that I can do it for a very long time. But also, I just I love doing it. Yeah. Every, people don't understand. Like I, hi right, guys, interrupt this podcast. One of our sponsors, BetterHelp. Shout them out. Uh, like honestly, incredible service, incredible platform, super easy to use. If you guys have ever been like, yo, I want to try out therapy. I'm maybe I'm a little bit like timid, or maybe I don't want to show up with an actual therapist in an office because like maybe it's gonna make you feel some sort of way. You can do it from your home. Tell them everything you want to tell them like you would in a, in a normal office. I'm a big believer in therapy. Number one, if you're not talking about your problems at all, like you kind of just play in your own mind and you kind of like you know your own worst enemy me at times right if you talk to someone else a lot of times if it's like your buddies or like family like there's biases in regards to like what you're giving off right Cause someone's always gonna give their opinion based on maybe what they think of you personally or what they want of you personally so there's always some sort of like it's like uh, conflicted so it is always a better option to find some sort of outside help and better help can help you if you guys want to do it again you don't have to go in person if you're a little bit shy you can do it all from the comfort of your home I don't think at all anyone should ever think you're a bitch for going to therapy I've done it for years I did it when I was a kid I've done it multiple times throughout my life life and I still do it to this day. So give it a shot. 
if you guys have ever been thinking, because let's be honest, like mental health is the most important form of health. Like without our mental health, I know this is an ad and shit, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys in general. Like there's nothing more truer than the fact that if your mental health is is fucked up, it doesn't matter. Everything else just doesn't even matter. It trickles down to every aspect of your life, your relationships, your health, your physical health. Like if you're not right here and you're constantly like playing tricks on yourself and you're constantly down yourself, you're constantly in a state of anxiety, you're constantly in a state of stress, it's gonna affect the rest of your life negatively in every aspect. Don't skip out on the most important muscle in the body, which is the fucking brain. All right guys, so to learn more, save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp. Use BetterHelp dot com slash raw talk again that's better h e l p dot com slash raw talk 10 percent off your first month give it a shot i love you guys let's get back to this podcast truly enjoy doing it that's how i feel about i this. make enough yeah i make enough money that like i don't have to do it eight hours a day yeah you know what i mean i there is no there's no obligation like i just like doing it eight hours a day that's what i enjoy doing i think about that all the time because people will be like oh you bought like this expensive thing or whatever and i'm like <laughs> Bitch, I could buy way more expensive shit. What the yeah. fuck do you mean? Like, you know how much money I make. Um, and I don't because, like, why would I? What am I going to do? What, like, I, I I don't even know what I would spend money on yeah. because I already do what I want to do. Yeah. Well, what about what about other businesses, other, like, projects, other things? That, are you doing anything else like that? No. I mean, so you, you, put, merch? You, just, you don't just put your money in a bank account. No. No. Yeah. What? Pretty much, yeah. You don't you don't have uh something else you want to invest in or like No. Damn. Invest in myself. That's it. Um, yeah, no. I mean I, I help my friends, that's it. Yeah. Or uh, my family. So does you don't have anything else where you're like, man, I like to have this kind of business or I want to push this forward. No, I don't want any of that. I know I could, but I don't want it. Yeah. I don't I don't even like People always get mad at me. My friends who are in finance get so mad. They're like, bro, you need to fucking put, invest. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, right now, it's actually good that I haven't invested. But that's besides the point. Um, but, you know, they always they always get mad at me. They're like, you got to, you know, make your capital accumulate more capital for you. What the fuck is wrong with you? And the system is certainly designed to, to benefit those who have a lot and, and, you know, retire basically at an early age. But I don't want to do that. I, I you know, I'll, I'll keep going for as long as I can. Yeah. And then figure it out. Makes sense. Okay. So I want to kind of switch topics a little bit. I know you, you, you're not the biggest fan of Andrew Tate. Oh, I love Andrew Tate. You love him? Are you, are you think he's number one fan maybe then? He's my number one fan. This motherfucker is out there still talking shit. The one time I wrecked his ass on a debate, which wasn't even supposed to be a debate. I just like came on the show because like this Fortnite streamer's manager was like, yo, Andrew Tate's on the stream. Do you want to come talk to him? And he was like owning this other Twitch streamer who's like older, has like, you know, color hair and he's a liberal and he was like owning him, I guess. He was like, oh, you... You, you look very feminine. You look very gay. Like, you know, doing that shit. And everyone was like, oh, you're celebrating him. And then I came on and I was just like, you're a dumbass. <laughs> and then he got so flustered by that because he had like, he just had dick riders up until that moment. You know what I mean? That uh, that stayed with him, I think, because he still talks about me all the fucking time. Where? where? Well, on what platform? On whatever podcast he goes on. Whenever he goes on a podcast, because I see it. He's, he still has like fanboy accounts that post his videos. And he like says, uh, we debated and he owned me. And then I'm afraid of debating him again or something. Like recently I saw that. I was like, what, the fuck? what do you mean? <laughs> That's Damn. not true. Damn, you should set something up. I like Andrew Tate, man. I do. I think Andrew Tate. I talked Tate, to him off camera for a minute. I think Andrew Tate is like, uh, he's like Liver King in the sense that like, I think Liver King's overarching output is just like healthy shit, like sleep, move. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I'm in, I'm on board with that. Andrew Tate's overarching output is just like women are whores. <laughs> so I don't like that, but I do think he's like a charismatic person. He's definitely a, a, a telegenic person. Uh, he would not be that successful if he wasn't. Yeah. So as an entertainer, I understand what he's doing as an entertainer. I understand and can say, Hey, see what you're doing there. And I think you have some qualities that I, I, you know, I think is, is good. You're a good entertainer. You can be very funny. Yeah. He's very funny sometimes. He's fucking hilarious, dude. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, also, he's got a lot of fucking young dickheads that uh, also think, like, that also just repeat what he's saying. Yeah. And and obviously, like, and I said this when he got banned off every platform, I was like, defeating Andrew Tate or, like, 
taking him off platform is not going to combat misogyny. Like you're not going to, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to even move the needle. You're just like pushing him away. And that's fine because he's a nuisance, I guess. Cause like 12 year olds are saying, <laughs> you're not making any money. You bitch to like other 12 year old girls in fucking middle. Are school. they though? <laughs> I 100%. 100% they're doing that. You think so? Oh, yes. I think he was, I think he and his like explosive growth and his, and his success truly made, like gave people and uh, uh, just the, the, um, the guidelines basically of how to like operate. Like those kids were going to say dumb shit anyway. They were probably going to say you have cooties, but instead now they're saying you're a bitch. <laughs> Where's my bagai? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, that's the difference. Like, it's, so it's still the though. same principle because, like, patriarchy, misogyny, these are, like, societal constructs. So, you know, that's not going to go away. I mean, everyone's have everyone has a little bit of that in them regardless, even myself. Right. And um, it's it, it's something that you need to, like, examine and, and work on. And that's part of being an adult. I do think he's very insecure, though. Despite how charismatic he can be, I think he's very, he's a very insecure person. What do you base that off of? No one who is secure with themselves talks about their material possessions that way. Are you talking about like his it's like stuff on Twitter? Stuff on Twitter, constantly talking about like how successful he is. Like women love me. They come up to me all the time and they say, Mr. Tate, you are so sexy and hot. And I say, yeah, bitch, I am hot. And it's like, he said that. He says shit like that I all that. the time. You've I never, I heard you've that. never heard that. I never heard That's that. That's crazy. He I like it's that. hard not to hear it. We all I know have guys. seen. I have seen like the money tweets and all that kind of shit. Yeah. We all know guys like this. Everyone knows a guy like this. A guy who's just fucking like a loud mouth who like talks a way bigger game than he actually can kick. And uh, I, for me, I think like other insecure dudes can't see through that for some reason. Like when I see that, I'm like, Oh, I know exactly what this dude is. I've but seen I, it a million times. I, I think a part of it's part of the character too. I think a yeah. part of it's cause like now, especially cause he's back with just, for example, on Twitter, um, he's not, he's definitely not speaking to the misogyny stuff that we're talking about. I don't think he's doing really any of that kind of shit anymore. No, he really, he really shut that down real quick. Yeah. <laughs> so it's different. It <laughs> is different. Happened? It's different. So now, now it's like, I mean, I, I, when I'm looking at it, it's like, of course, I think the things that the bigger hitters that the other stuff that you talked about, obviously like the empowerment of men, but then also like the money and like the, I, I believe in empowering men, but I don't think we need to empower men by like, you know, shitting on everyone else. <laughs> I think as a matter of fact, I think that doesn't even empower men. It just like makes it unnecessarily confrontational. Do you think that, that, um, the opposite though had been happening for many, many years, which is what, cause I think the reason why he has so much popularity outside of the controversial shit that he was saying, that was like causing people to be like, what the fuck who this guy's saying this? I can't believe yeah, this. Like the whole like choke women shit. Yeah. This crazy shit. He was saying yeah. wild shit. Right. But it was causing this controversial people make these, they, everyone's talking about it. But I think besides outside of that, I think for the longest time, like men were not told to be men, not like there was like this, it was, it was in fact the opposite where it was like, it seemed to go down this, like make men more feminine. I don't, but I don't, but, but he's feminine as fuck. Like homie is wearing the worst, the gayest looking slippers I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay. The skinniest fucking jeans. If you want to like, he's so Euro it's, I'm sorry, impossible for me to look at that as someone who grew up in Turkey and be like, wow, what a, what a alpha guy that guy is like, he's wearing like fucking the skinniest, slimmest, like uh, a t-shirt you've ever seen. Like that's, that's kind of zesty. You know what I mean? Zesty. And there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, like I'm very much uh, in support of that lifestyle if that's what you want to do. But like, don't fucking shit on, uh, you know, don't, don't fucking shit on people that want to do that. He, he constantly would like get mad or he, he, he says a bunch of things that I hate. One about me in particular. He says, one, I deny the Armenian genocide. I never have. He just like keeps lying about that for some fucking weird reason. Um, I've never done that. And I'm Turkish. So I think that's why he says it. So people will be like, oh yeah, he's Turkish. He must deny the Armenian genocide. I don't. That's one. And then two, that I wear dresses. And I have like, uh, yeah, kudos. We, we do like uh, fucking makeovers or whatever uh, for fun, for fucking TikTok and shit like that. And, and I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm jacked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I look good. It. I don't give a shit. And, um, 
but that's confidence. Like, I, I don't care. I can wear a dress. Like, it's not going to, I'm not insecure about my sexuality. I'm not insecure about my masculinity. Well, now I have to ask you a question. I have to okay. challenge you a little bit. No, go ahead. So moments ago, you just said he wears slippers that are oh, gay. That was, I was joking about that. Okay. But I'm saying like that's so, if someone's going to hear that though and be like, well then. But I also do think that that's a little fruity, you know? Yeah, but, but like. There's nothing, but there's nothing wrong with being a little Of course, fruity. of course. That's what I'm saying. I work out. You work out. I think, and I've said this many times over, if you go to the gym, you're a little gay. Okay, as a guy, <laughs> that's, yo, as a that's guy, comedy. You work out, you work out, dude. You're a little gay. We have a we have a term for it. It's called that's, admiring. It's, it's, it's oh come on, it's pretty funny. But like, you see other dudes with like fucking big ass pecs. You see a dude who's put a fuckload of work into his body. You don't go. That's impressive. Of course, yeah. Exactly. It's, it's a little gay. It's Just fine. A little bit. It's Just fine. I mean, listen. I mean, <laughs> I, I said this years ago. I said this years ago. I, I, <laughs> Like bodybuilding is like that. It's like, yes. cause I got popular on the internet and my following, my fan base is a hundred percent dudes. Yeah. There's not like, I have a ton of girls like this guy's hot. I mean, I'm sure I have some. <laughs> yeah, because yes. you have what a lot of people who work out know a guy's body. Like you have a body that is not designed to like exclusively attract women. Like you don't have the slim slender body. You have right. the fucking like umbrolic body. Right. That's for dudes. Dudes see that and go, that's impressive. I see that, I go, that's impressive. You put a lot of work into that, and I respect that. Yeah. Little gay. That's <laughs> it. Know, that's it. It's Doesn't funny. mean I want to suck a dick, but that's a little gay. It is what it is. It is what it is. I so just think that's my point though. Like I, I think like there's no reason to to just, you know, be more open about stuff like that and and try to like abide by these rigid principles of like what it means to be masculine. I think what means to be what it means to be masculine can change, but if there are like core foundations, I think one of them is, you know, being confident, being secure in yourself, being secure in your skin, and sometimes doing shit that's even goofy. You know what I mean? And I think um young men fail to comprehend, and I know that I was that young man too to like present myself a certain way because of my insecurities and and want to like uh behave in like the textbook ways that we've seen how men are supposed to be like alpha men are supposed to be there might be some positive values associated with that like leadership roles you know yeah. doing the right thing but also there's some negative ones that are kind of toxic where you're just like you go overboard or you're not always doing the right thing not wanting to take accountability for your actions like i think those are traits that that uh, we sometimes falsely attribute to like what it means to be masculine and i think insecure guys a lot of times like andrew tate can can create this like false notion of what it means to be a man i don't think i don't think men should be running around saying how fucking alpha they are I, I, my my principle has always been this if you have to say you're an alpha male you're probably not an alpha male i'm not even talking about the fact that like alpha males and beta males or whatever the fuck was immediately, uh, uh, you know, uh, destroyed by the main guy who looked at wolves in captivity. Like the first researcher that came up with the alpha beta uh, concept, <laughs> literally immediately was like, actually, this was wrong, and it should not be uh, attributed to humans in any way. But these were also wolves in captivity. Whatever. Like I'm not even talking about the scientific background on alpha and beta. I'm talking in general. Like if you think you embody the qualities of what it means to be an alpha male. Right? Like a go getter. Like you fuck shit up, you know? You take what's yours. Um, you're not going to run around saying you're alpha. Yeah, you, shouldn't, you wouldn't have to tell everyone. Yeah, that. people will know. Like no one has to be like, like, I don't know. I've just never met someone that is like, I'm such an alpha male. I'm so successful. I'm so fucking rich. Look at me and gone, wow, that's a sweet dude. I want to hang out with that guy. Even though, ironically, if Andrew Tate didn't do all that dumb shit, He's like a funny person. Yeah. And I would literally be like, I could hang out with that guy. Dude, I think he's hilarious. I talked to him for like two hours. That's what I mean. Off camera. I, he was I, cool. I, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure he's wonderful. But um, his output and the way he presents himself and the way he promotes himself is is trying to reach as large an audience as possible. And in order to do that, you got to like really fucking dumb it down. And I think when you do that, especially when you're doing it for the things that Andrew Tate is doing it, you come across like, um, you know, in my opinion, you come across very insecure. Other people don't see it though. They, they think he's like super confident. It's like, um, there's a veil. And I think like, depending on your own perception, 
that's either like impossible to see behind or immediately you can just uh, destroy it. Like I see someone like Andrew Tate, someone constantly saying how rich they are, someone constantly talking about how expensive the things that they're buying are, someone who constantly is like fucking promoting that shit, someone who's saying like they're fucking so many bitches like all the time. I'm like, bro, what are you fucking 20? Like, are you... It's literally the kid in high school who I was as well, who was like, yeah, I have a girlfriend. She's super sexy. She just goes to a different school. It's that. And the worst <laughs> part funny. is like, he probably does have sex with a lot of women. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to do that. You don't have to say that. But, I, but that's the thing. I think part of like, like you were talking about part of his output is that though. Yeah. It's, it's marketing, but yeah. like, you know, you could find something better. But so anyways, another thing that I was kind of talking about was, I guess, I think the reason why he's so popular is uh the the empowerment aspect of it though because he was the first guy who came out saying shit that everyone for so long was afraid to say though like for example like if i got on the internet and was like i don't like fat bitches right <laughs> people would be like wow body but that's how, so fucked up but how is that empowering men no i'm not i'm not saying that's not empowering men but i'm just saying for the longest time on the internet it's okay though for girls to be like i don't like short dudes i only date tall guys <laughs> but, but that's not empowering men either right like neither is but what i'm saying is like yeah. it, there was this disbalance of like it's okay for people to say that and men felt like i can't say this otherwise people are gonna be like oh body dysmorphia you're body shaming I like if i said i don't like fat bitches i like skinny girls or i like girls who are like more in shape someone's gonna be like wow you're so insensitive i can't believe this <laughs> But it's like, if, if a girl says, I only like guys who are six feet and taller, it's like, that's fair. Okay. I mean, that doesn't mean they're going to get it, though. No, I know. It's not, <laughs> but it's not about getting it or anything. It's just like, there, yeah, no, there has been that mean. double standard no, no, for a I, long time. I, I know what you mean. I think, like, we hyper-focus on the double standard of, like, the aesthetics in, in many instances. I think we give some, I guess, amenities, if you will, um, to people that are, like, otherwise getting owned in different categories. Like... Uh, people that are being be, being marginalized from a certain perspective, um, we just kind of allow uh, people like that or, or people who are in that category to like get away with saying things to those who are not marginalized in that similar regard. Because like, look, the reality is, I, this is not going to be a popular thing to say, but I think like I, I myself, as a six foot four, relatively attractive, successful, cisgender, heterosexual white guy. There's not much you can tell me that is going to like cut me to my core. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's nothing you can say that like lands on like preordained stereotypes about someone like myself or someone like yourself that is going to immediately dismiss us. You know what I mean? Because like we're the default character. <laughs> we're the default character in every video game. We're the default character. I'm not saying like, oh, this is the worst thing possible. And we only, we need to stop this. We need to put an end to that. And we need to change it immediately because I don't think that even that is actually creating progress, right? But I do recognize that. And I also recognize that when you're not the default character, people can like very quickly cut you down without really doing too much. They can like shit on your accomplishments immediately by saying, well, she's a woman, she fucked her way to the top. Classic, right? And for a big chunk of people, because that's a stereotype that has like uh, been, been normalized and repeated so many times over, a lot of people immediately go, oh yeah, maybe that's right. And it doesn't even matter. And maybe some women have fucked their way to the top, but ultimately like, it doesn't matter because you're, you're, you can cast the entirety of women in a similar way like that, right? That's a level of marginalization that women go through. Men do not. We don't have anything like that. Can you, cause I, I can't think of like a single thing. Maybe there is something, but like, um, in my life, I've never been, uh, I guess marginalized in any meaningful way for being white or marginalized in any meaningful way for uh, uh, being a man or being straight. Um, being Muslim, that has, you know, definitely had some setbacks. And, but like nothing that, you know, took me down uh, ultimately because I'm still pretty fucking white. You know what I mean? I'm not brown. I'm not like, uh, you know, I don't wear it on my face that my name is Hassan, right? right. So I think that that's a, that's a pretty big advantage that I've had that I recognize. And, I think for that reason, uh, some people that come from that background, like women, for example, they lash out. They do the men are trash thing, right? Yeah. All men are trash. Kill all men. Like that was like a big thing. And like, especially like 2014, 2015. 
And it's like, that's dumb as fuck, obviously. Yeah. You know I mean? Your dad's a man. Like, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of fucking good guys in your life, too. And, and I do get annoyed with that as well. But, like, I don't really spend a lot of time on that because I know, like, that's coming from a place of powerlessness. Because who cares? There is no legislation that is being written that is, like, like, the abortion ban is a good example of this. Like, there's no equivalent to that for men. You know what I mean? Yeah. However... Everyone does face one significant form of oppression, whether you're a white man or not, doesn't matter. And that is under capitalism. That, that is what I firmly believe. I, be, I believe that if you're a worker, if you're working class, yes, you are going to get fucked over by your boss. And it doesn't matter. You can be a white man, you can be a black man, doesn't matter. As a worker, you are going to get fucked over by your boss because your boss wants you to work as many hours as he can make you work for the least amount of money. And you want to work for as little as you can for the most amount of money. That's a normal contradiction that everyone experiences and everyone feels. And that dynamic is definitely going to cause some friction, some tension in your life. And you will get fucked over. I mean, you've worked before you, you know, built this gym and stuff like that, right? Did you, you work a kinda, regular day job? Kind of, yeah. What did no. you do? No, I never really had a regular day job. I, uh, I worked you, at... You never had a boss? I did. So I worked at, I did. I worked at 24 hour fitness before I like became an independent oh, trainer. The fucking worst. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah. yeah. I remember it was, I mean, it's, it's a lot like what you're talking about. It was, I remember like, you, like a PTD or whatever, like a fitness director that was, yeah, no, I was, a, I was a personal trainer. I did well selling training. And then, you know, the club manager, like around Christmas time, around this time, they'd always have meetings. They'd be like, you got to sell more. You got to sell yeah. more. And I'd be like, what do I need to sell? Like the, I'm trying to sell the result to these people because I knew that ultimately that would get them to come back to continue to buy. And he's like, yeah, but like re-sign this person anyways because like they're trying to hit quotas and i was i remember being like fuck this shit i just don't give a fuck i'm gonna quit yeah so but, but when you say capitalism is doing that to everyone like we're, but then we're also we're all doing it to ourselves though right like well well now we're doing it to others in a way or we're benefiting from it in some way which is why it's like impossible to escape like there's no way that i could be like an ethical consumer you know what i mean there's no like, no matter what, I'm wearing Nike shoes, you know? Some Indonesian baby made this shit, you know? <laughs> There's no way to avoid this. You just can't, right? It's fucked. But it's true. And it's Sir, like I love those shoes, though. Yeah, I mean, they're fire. <laughs> Fuck. Like, shouts out to the Indonesian kids that God. made this, like, you know, those little tiny baby hands. Just they're fucking, they're fucking doing the work. Details. Yeah. And, like, the point is, though, like, I, there's nothing I can do about that. Like, I, I can't, like you know, fly into Indonesia and do a coup. So there's like a people's revolution there. You yeah. know what I mean? But like what I can do is at least, uh, you know, make my immediate space as, as good as possible. And, uh, you know, try to try to promote those values for others. Like I work with uh, union made domestic manufacturing in my merchandise. When I do that, there's a lot of fucking hurdles uh, on, in that regard when we're doing the merchandise yeah because like you know they just don't have enough in supply it's not like it, it's hard but i still do that because like it's what i believe in you know what i mean it's it's little things like that that i try to instill in others as well do you have a team that helps you with that side of your business or is it just all you? yeah I, I work with someone okay i work with like a company that helps me out cool but um but you just described it like everyone has had an experience if they've ever worked under a boss and i did too before i like started on my own right. you know you you have no control over your own life. And that is where you spend 80% of your adult life. 80% of your adult life when you're working, you're working as someone else's bitch. Like, that's just the reality, unfortunately. And there's nothing really you can do about it. And it's like normalized. And what I advocate for is to at least like get a little bit of that autonomy. People always say, Hassan, how do you do eight hours a day, 10 hours a day? Well, it's because... Like, don't you suffer? Don't you have like trauma? Don't you need to go to a therapist? And I'm like, no, not really. And I was thinking about that recently. It was like back when I was working less hours, but under someone else, I fucking hated going to work on Monday. Stress, I felt the yeah. Sunday scaries or whatever people call it. Yeah. Right. I was so stressed all the time. I was worried that over the weekend, like I might get a fucking phone call. Part of that was because I was broke, didn't have enough money to, you know, so I had to like nickel and dime Ubers to figure out like, you know, uh, am I going to have enough money by the end of this month to get food? Um, and then the other reason was because I was working under someone and I had no autonomy in my life. I had alienation for my labor. These were things that, that truly were gigantic weights placed on me. And then the moment that I uh, had that autonomy, the moment I started working for myself, all of a sudden that was gone. And now I, I, 
have this most liberating feeling all the time. If I don't want to work one day, I could just stop. Yeah. You know, I don't have to ask nobody. My, uh, my, my, uh, insurance is not tied to anyone else. It's just something I pay for. You but know how long I mean? did it take you to get there? It took years. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is I believe that like big parts of that you could literally have while working under someone. We just don't want to do it because profit margins are slim. Like a workplace could offer more autonomy to the worker. A worker could fight back for said autonomy. Um, a workplace... And, and I'm sure like you have a smaller operation. A lot of YouTubers I talk to, they already do this without even thinking about it. Like they don't fucking grind their workforce down because you have a much closer relationship with the people that you're working with yeah. because it's not faceless. Yeah. It's not some fucking, you're not a factory owner that owns a million fucking factories or a piece of a million factories through the stock market. You're working with your workers. They know what they're doing. You you know what they're doing. You're close. You're face to face with them. If one of them's like, "Yo, I'm sick. I can't come in today." You're not gonna be like, "No, you have to fucking come in, bitch." You know what I mean? Yeah. I hope you're not like that. But my point is, I'm definitely like that. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta right. work through it, motherfucker. Right, who's, who's Nate over there? Is it Jacob over there? Jacob's right here. Yeah, yeah, of course. Even when you're sick. Yeah. No, so, I mean it depends. I mean, this guy was sick. He got his fucking wisdom teeth taken out. He was gone for basically a week. But, but no, I get it. I, <laughs> yeah, he had a full on vacation. But yeah. I, I get what you're saying, but I guess the question is like on the bigger scale then for these like massive corporations, like the, how do you even scale? How would you scale something like that? To Because like I understand it here I on mean, this. I mean, it is McDonald's, right? Like you think of McDonald's. Like it's the worst place that you can work for pretty much in America, right? Yeah. But those motherfuckers have unions in like Norway and shit. How the fuck are they over there, you know, slinging the same burger, but they're doing it in fashion, you know? They're doing it in a much more fashionable way. They're doing it with way better amenities those countries also offer health care you know what i mean that's a huge gigantic fucking burden like having your health care tied to your place of work was a, a a really scary leap for me to make when i was like leaving the young turks and going on my own i was like fuck like what's gonna happen if i need health care and i yeah. don't have it you know i can't pay for it or some shit yeah so like that's huge that's a major burden that you live with, if you're a regular worker, you're Joe Schmo listening at home to this podcast, probably on the way to fucking, you know, drive to another shitty day at work where you're a fucking dumbass manager who doesn't even know better than you, but somehow got to that position before you did, is going to fucking <laughs> lord over your goddamn life. You're going to be thinking, of, you're not even thinking about that, but you're thinking about it no matter what. It's like a weight that you have on you at all times. Like you can't control your fucking life. You know that, you recognize that, you live with that every fucking day. And my point always is that like you could have more control over that and you should have more control over your life. If you have a family fucking, if you have a family problem, if you're a server, if you're in the service industry and you have a family issue, like your manager should not be able to fucking immediately take you off for the next fucking two weeks because you didn't come on like, you know, peak time uh, one weekend because you had to take saying. care of your mom. Like that's fucking bullshit. We have no mechanism of pushback. We don't have mechanism of pushback in, in the workplace and we don't have it in our political structure either. And that's what I speak out against for the most part. Do you ever encourage people to just like try something else? What do you mean? Like a different job? Yeah. Or I mean, <laughs> I'm sure, but yeah, but they're still going to be working for someone else. And it's a shot in the dark because that period, that intermediary period where you don't have a job, you don't have insurance. The fuck are you supposed to do? <laughs> but you figured it out. I know, but. I figured it out. I know, but that's survivor's bias. Like, I don't, I, I know I figured it out, yeah. but there are a million examples of us that didn't make it. It's true. We just don't know about them because they're fucking probably homeless now. You know what I mean? Like, we just don't know, which is another issue that I have. I'm so fucking annoyed with the way that stupid liberals uh, deal with homeless people. It's really annoying, but that's a longer conversation. We don't have to what get about the homeless people here? Yeah, it's really terrible. We would. <laughs> California is rich as fuck. We're like richer than nations. Yeah. We should not have a single fucking person living so, on the but, street. So why do you think that is then? Because that's like frustrating as fuck to me too. Because I'm like, how much it's money awful. I pay in taxes? I'm like, what the fuck are they yeah. doing with this? Yeah, but listen, the police department needs a fucking armored personnel carrier, okay? That's why they can't fucking deal with the homeless people. It's not even just the police department though, uh, even though their budget is fat. Um, it's because of housing. Housing is seen as an investment vehicle in this country. It's the primary way to generate wealth and it is for a lot of people it you could directly point back to housing uh as a as a method to 
literally stop black people from uh, developing intergenerational wealth in this country through redlining, for example. So housing has always been uh, the, the primary mechanism to like make wealth, generate wealth. And when that's the case, people don't look at homes as shelter. They look at homes as like another investment opportunity. That's why we had 2008, the housing market crash. Um, and we didn't learn from that at all. And um, I, I don't look at housing as like a commodity. I look at it as like a need. And, but other people don't see it that way. And these are very powerful groups, homeowners associations, real, sorry, real estate developers, and you know, landlords across the board are very powerful in local politics. And they don't want fucking housing. They don't want to build more housing because if the inventory is limited, then your house and the value of your house is always going to go up. Uh, and most people become homeless because they get priced out of the housing market. Yeah. It's not because they're lazy. It's not because they're stupid. It's not because they're fucking drug addicts immediately, even though those people shouldn't be denied housing either, because I think it's a human right, uh, just because they are like that or whatever. Um, but most people get to that point that you see on the street with the dude, you know, fucking grabbing his shit and, and playing with it in the middle of the fucking street on the boulevard, uh, they get to that point after years and years of being brutalized by being out in the fucking elements, you know? Even animals need a cave, and you're a human being, and you don't have any shelter whatsoever, you know? You're, you're constantly getting attacked, you're getting brutalized, you have no opportunities, there's no way to, like, survive, there's no way to get back, and it becomes harder and harder to get back to, like, what you once, you know, could have been, like a healthy person, a productive member of society, and then you lose your mind. You try to self-medicate. You start taking drugs to forget about it. You start selling drugs. Maybe you can make a little bit of money that way. Start stealing shit, little shit here and there to make money, to survive. And then ultimately you become this fucking wreck. And it becomes significantly harder to also recover from that condition, to rehabilitate yeah. you from that condition. And it all started because you just couldn't fucking pay rent because the area that you lived in for many, many years uh, when you were working a job is becoming more and more expensive yeah. and you have no other alternative. Uh, you also don't have an adequate public transit system and in, in Los Angeles, especially. I just so don't, I even, still just don't understand how California has all this money and it's like, it's still just a shit show because moneyed interests are significantly more powerful. If you've ever been to a European city, you see how it's designed. You see how it's structured and you're like, how the fuck don't we have this? We live like animals in America, okay? If you go to go to fucking Amsterdam, you'll you'll see it. You'll be like, what the fuck? There's like trains that are running literally like 24-7. Um, there's parts of the city that you can't even like drive a car in, which is unthinkable from an American perspective. I mean, you're driving a fucking big ass pickup pickup truck that doesn't yeah. even fit in like 90% of the streets out there. They got buses, trams, trains, like, you know, there's there's public transit all day, every day. It's clean as fuck. That is huge. Would you, but would you ever live in, in a place like that? Or would you always stay in yeah. America? You I would. mean, I grew up, I grew up in Turkey, yeah. much poorer country, but Istanbul and Ankara, like I grew up on public transit. You know what I mean? That's yeah. I grew up with that. It was awesome. It's great. Fuck. It's just fucking dude. There's just too many potholes in fucking Woodland Hills and Calabasas. That too. That too. It's crazy. I just don't get how much I, I honestly like the amount of money I know that's funneled through like taxes and just like it's always it feels like it's just like more taxes, more taxes. And I'm thinking nothing's changing, though. I don't see yeah, anything. What the fuck change. am I paying all this money for? I get it. I understand. It is very frustrating. Where is it going? Why are we not seeing the results? It's because everyone's fucking corrupt. Yeah, that's what, I mean, and like the thing I was it. the thing I was saying earlier, that's why I get just so frustrated in general. I, I don't even really talk about all this political shit. It's just funny. Like, it's just funny to me because like that's what you do. Like yeah. fucking every day, pretty much. Yeah, but I think like there's a reason why I have a, a, a fairly large audience or I have a lot of people who are even on the right who say like, yeah, I watch you to get a different perspective. Yeah. And that's because like, I mean, I get the system is broken. You know what I mean? I'm not like, I'm not like unconditionally on the Democratic Party side. I shit on them probably more than I shit on the Republicans because like they are supposed to be on the side of the fucking working class. They claim that they are. Yeah. And then they do shit about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's what it is. I, I guess I tell it like it is yeah. in, in some ways. And um, yeah, I, I you know, my solutions are different than than the Democratic Party. They like liberals want to just not look at the problem like liberals. Yeah. It, it sometimes feels like the Democratic Party is literally like, oh, you see a homeless person? 
well, that's kind of problematic that you like even recognize that they're homeless. Jesus. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, fuck. just let them eat trash. Like, it's fine. It's like, no, man, that's not fine. That's awful. Like, what the fuck? It's awful for him. Okay. I'm not just saying like, oh, it's an eyesore, you know, eviscerate them. Cause like a lot of California libs are like that where they just like also are just as fucking brutal as like, you know, red state Republicans would be where they're just like, get them out of here. Get them out of here. I don't give a shit. Um, I'm not like that, but I want them to have shelter. I want them to have a homeless, a, a, a housing first, uh, you know, rehabilitative policy that allows them to get help. The Would you ever get actually need. into politics? No, fuck that. This shit's this awful. Is so interesting. No, it's just interesting because like it's for your answer to be that, but like this is also kind of what you do. It's no, just because so... they're all scumbags. <laughs> they're monsters. They're I fucking know. awful, dude. Are you kidding me? No, I mean, I've worked with a lot of political organizations. I work with a lot of labor unions. Um, I work with a lot of political organizations. I do a lot of fundraisers, do a lot of charity. But um, when it comes down to it, like, no, I would not run for politics. It's awful. Yeah. What would um, you do if you, had, if you had to stop Twitch now? What would you do? Oh, and another question. Like, what do you enjoy outside of all this shit? Nothing. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I don't enjoy yeah. shit. Like, I just, I like working out. I watch anime. Yo, I watch up? fucking Hell TV yeah. shows. What are you watching right now? I'm watching One Piece right now. I just finished White Lotus. Nice, that was yeah. pretty good. Um, but it's not an anime though. But uh, as far as anime, I'm watching One Piece. One Piece, yeah. That's a that's dedication. Yeah. It requires a lot of time. I um. Uh, Any video games you play right now? Yeah, I mean, I play a lot of video games. I play Valorant a lot. I'm, really? Are you I'm, good at that? I'm, I'm trash all right. At that, bro. I'm not. I'm not terrible. It's, it's the movements of that. The mechanics is so like. Yeah. Slow. You never play CS:GO? I was never big on that. Yeah, never big on it. You strike me as a as a console player. I yeah, I, I grew up playing yeah. console. I yeah, play a little fucking little, jock. You're like a yeah. fucking. Yeah. <laughs> I was lit though. Yeah, you're like oh cod. Yeah, you were doing Hall, trick shots. Yeah, Face Call clan. of Duty. Fucking, uh, I really liked Halo. That was my that was my most yeah. fun I ever had. I uh, I was like that too. I went from I was a sweaty ass fucking gamer. I had like a 17 inch Gateway FX laptop. And then I got pussy for the first time. I was like, oh, fuck this shit. I'm out. And then I started playing console games instead. And then um, when I got back on Twitch, I started playing desktop games again. I see. And, you know, yeah, <laughs> that's how it is. No more women. You got to you gotta swear off women if you want to be good. <laughs> Bro, it's, yeah, for real, for gaming, for if sure. If you want to be good at gaming, no more women. I mean, shit, even like I feel like Twitch, I was talking, We I was on, I did the full send pod with Kai, um, and we were talking about, like just grinding to get to that point to be able to be at the point where he's at as a streamer. Um, and like, just not, not that I don't think he's like saying I'm not involving myself with any women, but like the minute he kind of was deciding, like, I'm not going to try to pursue this or put my energy towards this and put it all towards streaming and growing this. Yeah. It's a full blown, it's a 24 seven thing. You, that's your life now yeah. for sure. If you want to be good at it, you got to put in a lot of hours. Most people at the top are doing that. You know what yeah. I mean? Most people at the tippy top of the fucking platform, are putting like eight to ten hours. So who 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 is at the top? Who are the number like? What's like the top ten right now? I think it's like Felix uh, XUC. Yeah, of course. Uh, who is like the gamer? I mean, he's like he embodies like the fucking fourteen year old Adderall kid. Like you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I love him. He's great. Uh, you have Asmund Gold, who was like the older gamer, <laughs> plays WoW. Um, he also embodies the sweaty gamer on the other side. Yeah. You got like a lot of the, uh, we call it the W community. You got Kai Sanat and, uh, you know, the AMP boys, they're blowing up now and they're fucking dope. They're, they're super, they're, they're sick. They're really good entertainers. They're, they're pretty big. You got me, yeah. I guess in my own little corner, I'm in a unique space because I routinely talk about politics. Yeah. I mean, I do other stuff too. I play games. I, I talk about like drama, culture, shit like that. Yeah. I guess who else? I don't really know. I mean, I guess that's it. And then you have the international community and that's like a whole different thing. Yeah. You know, e buy and, and what Spanish advice would you give to some kids who like want to do Twitch? Like what would don't, don't do it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not for everybody. It, it's just not, it, it's not for everyone. You have to be really fucking lucky. But if you're like, you have your heart set on it. You have to network. You have to network a lot because you're not like, you're not getting discovered. You know what I mean? It's super, super, super hard to get discovered. Like it's through the platform itself. Yeah. Yeah. You have to get discovered outside of the platform if you want. And then, and plenty of people don't, or some people do get like their one moment, but they don't, they can't capitalize on it. You know what I mean? Right. But if you do actually get discovered and you see growth, okay. 
then seize on that opportunity if you're truly, truly interested and, you know, work really fucking hard. Yeah, you can't stop, I yeah. think, once you get it. Yeah, I never did. Like, I, if you look at my hours, like, since I started streaming full time, I've taken, like, 10 days off. Yeah, it's total. insane, bro. So yeah. you don't travel? You don't go, like... I do. But like, I travel, and then I film when I'm traveling. I do IRL streams, or I have a process. Like, I, I have, like a, like, a setup that I can do from a laptop. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, okay. So I do that in hotel rooms and, and also do like, I combine it. I'll do like an IRL stream on a backpack and then I'll go to my hotel room and do like a regular desktop stream after that. Oh, too. interesting. But like, that kind of sucks. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, but I also don't know what else to do. Like it's, it's what I like doing. Yeah, I get it. I understand that. I feel, you know, I feel purposeless if I'm somewhere and I'm not making content, if I'm not filming. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. So, okay. I got a question for you on that. Cause I'm 33 and I'm like really I'm eager to have a family, right? Mm -hmm. You don't think about that at all. I know obviously not going to get into details about dating. Anything, not really. So you're just like, no you don't care. If it happens, it happens. That's how I go about it for the most part. Yeah. yeah. Do you it's pretty easy. You just nut inside of someone. <laughs> yeah. Stop. And then yeah. you have a family. <laughs> That's how it works. Bro, I wish it was. I, I feel <laughs> like it's, but yeah, of course it is that easy, but it, now it's way more complicated. Way don't more get, complicated. Don't get baby trapped now. Yeah, exactly. That's you gotta what I'm watch saying. out. Dude, it's like, but that's what I'm saying. How can you give time to someone that you know you want to spend time with enough to be like, okay, this is the one that I would be comfortable doing that with, right? You, you don't even have time to do that. I mean, like your schedule is true. insane to me. I mean, you can you can have time. You can definitely make time for someone. It's good that like it's good if also they're busy too, though. You know what I mean? If they're like also in their own in their own field or yeah. they're they're also independently successful. Like you just gotta. Some people in in my side of the world like they make it work with normies they make it work with people that just like have like a regular nine to five i don't know how the fuck they do that but it's been very successful they are able to do that i i have done both and i think that it's like uh you know there's there's positives to both dating yeah. like a civilian and also dating someone who's in it who gets it social yeah media. who's yeah who's in the stink of it all yeah but ultimately you know you just gotta it's the same as being in a relationship in any other capacity. You just have to have mutual respect and, and self assurance and allow them to do their own thing. And then you do your own thing and that's it. You know? Yeah. Fair. It's just hard. So I guess, I mean, shit, I've, I've fucking, I've struggled with it because for so long I spent so much time focused on doing the stuff that I had to do to get these like things to build this stuff. And I, I didn't spend as much time on like personal actual development to be able to have a very solid relationship. Cause I was so focused yeah. on business development and I feel that that's not good. Yeah. But you got to work on yourself like a muscle. And yeah. That's, that's where the problem is. A lot of people, a lot of people think like uh, relationships are, are almost like external in the same way that like working out is. Cause you're like, if I do this many reps at this weight, and you write it down and then I fucking try to hit a larger, you know, hit, you know, try to get it up to fucking 10 and then next week I'll be able to do 11 or 12 and then right. eventually put the weight up more. You know, like if you're, if you're thinking about like relationships in that same way where you're like, you have checkpoints, you're like, I'm going to find a girl. She's going to have these qualities. And if she has all these qualities and that's good, and then we're going to get in a relationship and then eventually we're going to move in together. And then eventually like maybe, you know, I pop the question like, it's not like that at all. In my opinion, for me, everyone's different. I, I go way more off of vibes on that field than anything else because, um, you know, there are still certain qualities I look for yeah. in a partner, but ultimately I do, I just kind of let it, uh, I just kind of let it ride, I guess. Yeah. Leave it to fade a little bit. And, um, and part of the reason why I can do that, I think is because like, I have the confidence and the self-assurance in myself that like, I don't even think about it. I'm like, if I want to date someone, I can easily date someone if I want to. And if the right person comes along, I'll do it. Um, man, when I'm single, I'm fine. I'm just having fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the way I approach it. Okay. Besides all that stuff, um, I guess like it's just so funny. I'm trying to ask you, like, what would you, what would you, what do you think you'd ever be doing after Twitch? Cause it sounds like you have never even thought of that. You don't even think about yeah. it. You just think you're going to do this forever. I don't even think about it. Cause like, I, yeah, I, I mean, maybe it's bad. I hope it's not bad. I mean, but what is bad, you know, Whatever. maybe it's bad that I'm like, not, you know, figuring out like an exit plan or something. Cause I know that like, there's a limit to this. Right. But I love 
being in front of a large audience and being able to entertain them and being able to change people's perspectives. Uh, okay, I, to that point, I so guess I would just do that. But somewhere. I guess the reason why I ask, like Twitch specifically, right? Like, let's say you're 40. Do you think that the audience demographic on Twitch is going to be like, oh, I want to fuck with this 40 year old? I'm not saying that you can't. I'm not saying it's not no, possible. That's a good question. But that's what I'm saying. Like the evolution of that, where it's just like the people using the platform now that are going to be your audience just may be like too too far disconnected age wise. Yeah, I think that will inevitably happen. Yeah. Um, but you know, you just gotta you just gotta keep going, and your, my audience will probably get older with me yeah. as well. Are there other platforms you would move to? Are there other like? I mean, because obviously I, the I podcast a, stuff. I have a pretty big YouTube presence. I have a podcast. Um, maybe I would turn to traditional media at a certain point in my life potentially. But uh, for the time being, I don't see that for the next like 10 years. I don't see that happening. What I always wanted and what I still want is to be able to turn my Twitch into like something that is competitive in the same exact way that my operation works right now. Just, you know, serve a larger audience. And I think that's possible. You say competitive, like meaning like, you know, numbers that akin to CNN ratings. Got it. You know? Yeah. I, I want that because like right now. I get thirty to forty thousand concurrent viewers. I think, like from a ratings, like a TV ratings point, that's like, like a TV show with a hundred to two hundred thousand, maybe three hundred thousand viewers, like depending on how they do ratings. Yeah, well, that's um, massive. That that's 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 a, that's a pretty big TV show. Yeah, and I do that for ten hours, right? But I want to get to like a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand viewers. I what do you think? Get, what do you think it would take for you to get there? Because like to more <laughs> charitability, more people being charitable <laughs> to to what I have to say. I think that's I a big part of it. Instead of immediately being like, "Oh, that guy's a fucking commie. Fuck that guy. I hate him." Or, "Oh, that's how I felt about you when I first. Yeah. I was oh, like, this guy's fuck, talking shit about me. What yeah, the fuck? this guy's a fucking commie and he drives a Porsche. Fuck that guy. Communism means you're supposed to be fucking poor, bitch. Why aren't you poor?" <laughs> You know, that's like, that's like 98% of people that immediately hear about me. And I'm like, eh, whatever. I like nice things, bitch. I want you to have them too. Yeah. You know, that's funny. But that's it. Did you have like, a Porsche? I do. I have a take in. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was going to get one. It's a good car. Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever had a Porsche? No, but I, that's actually the car I was going to buy. You should have bought it. it. Yeah. You're a big it. boy. It's hard yeah. to fit in the fucking 911. Yeah. I tried. That I can't fit nice. in it. It's really nice. Like I'm not like I didn't get it because it's an EV. Uh, even though I was very that's intrigued why I was going to get it. I was very intrigued by it. Like I think it's and it's it is dope. Having an EV is fucking sick. Yeah. Don't go to the gas station. Just fucking fuel it at home. Charge it at home. And and also the zero sixty is stupid. Yeah. That's but why I was going to buy it. It. But I think Porsches are beautiful driving machines. Yeah. Like it is a treat to drive. And I never gave a fuck about cars like i i had a lot of money and i was still driving my 2010 camry my toyota camry and and that thing i still have it i still drive it yeah you know when my friends and family are like oh i want to drive the porsche I'm like, yeah sure take it and i'll drive the camry around yeah. but like um and it still works but uh i was like i have all this money like i use this car all the time to go to places might as well get like a nice car. You know what I mean? Uh, see how it feels. I'm 31. Like, I'm not going to be able to, if I get it when I'm 50, people are going to be like, this guy's fucking, look at this old asshole. Yeah. He's just trying to live his like glory days. I'm like, I'm, I'm young right now. I'm still young. Yeah. Why don't I just buy like a nice car? Yeah, I so get I, you. So I got to buy, I got to buy a nice car. Now that we got to get it. I got to, you got a fucking wrap. Yeah. Sick. I've had that I shit love. for like, I've had that shit for like fucking, I don't know how many years now. 20, 2017. <laughs> I love Raptors. They're I love fire. it. I love it. And I had I had like different cars prior to that. Yeah. Um. But I just I totally just got out of giving a fuck at all. Like I just kept the same truck. Not that it's not a nice truck. Very nice truck. Yeah. No. But I know what you mean. I, but, but like that's why I had the Toyota because I was like I don't give a fuck. It still works. What am yeah. I gonna do? Who gives a shit? I think there were a couple instances that was like that truly made me get a want to get a new car though. I used to use it as a filter because I always thought like if someone really gives a fuck about my car, then I don't want to be with them anyway. Oh, you that's know interesting. I mean? So I always thought that that was like a good filter if I like pick someone up on a date, you know what I mean? And they're like, ew, this is your fucking car. It's like, all right, well, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'll go fuck yourself. I jotted that down. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember going to this event that I was one of the hosts on. Like I was a, like a welcomed guest that I was supposed to do this like live stream thing. And I pulled up to the parking lot and the, 
And the dude stopped me. And he's like, no, 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 you can't park in here. I'm like, no, no, I'm one of the hoes. Like, I'm one of the talent. And he's like, no, this is the talent parking lot. And he didn't understand. Like, no, no, I'm the talent. And he's like, what? <laughs> Just because <laughs> you your sure? car? Oh, dude, it was bu- it's a busted car. <laughs> it's a it's an old-ass Toyota. It's like a 2010 Toyota. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, that was my first... That's the first time I was like, damn, like maybe I need a new car. Fuck. <laughs> and you know, my friends would make fun of me all the time too. And people would constantly get in my car because they think it's an Uber. Yeah. Like whenever I pull up to like a venue, people would get in the car. I'm like, no, this is my yeah, car. Stop. Fuck off. Yeah. Fuck, or like man. valet would never come up when I want to park valet. <laughs> so, you know, the, I had to handle that problem. It wasn't that big of a deal, but you know, it's yeah. mostly for fun. That's yeah. why I got it. What are what are some of like do you, do you have like one of the most enjoyable moments or what is the most memorable moment you've had while like streaming just in all your years of doing it? Is there something that sticks out? Probably the AOC Among Us thing. Like I put that shit together. That was crazy. I don't even know how the hell that happened. Um I don't know if you're familiar Putting with this, but the I, game. Yeah I, yeah, I I set up this like lobby for Among Us between like me, AOC, Ilhan Omar, and like a bunch of streamers. And that was huge. It was like one of the, it was like a, one of the first like massive moments that got like so much media coverage too. Like a politician's playing a video game with some of the biggest like stars on the internet. Yeah. That was definitely a memorable moment. 2020 election was a memorable moment. I would say January 6th was another memorable moment where I had 257,000 people watching. Whoa. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, it was crazy. It was like what were you covering? Like just uh January 6th. Yeah, yeah. Like in real time. That's that's insane. Like you know, two hundred and fifty thousand people. It's tuning fucking in. nuts. Cause like at this point I feel like I am like the guy you go to. If you're under the age of thirty five and some shit's happening, you're like, What the fuck is that about? That's where you go. You you come click on my stream, regardless of your political persuasion. If you're at least a little interested in politics or yeah. news. You are not, so no. I doubt that you're. No, I, I just like Elon Musk, dude. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no. That's why you like Elon Musk. Elon Musk is sick. Yeah, no, he's so. <laughs> I love trolling. He's you. so. He's like. <laughs> no, no. I don't even like. I mean, whatever. He, he's just like. He's so like, like such a petulant, like Bro, I think he's whiny, dope. fucking, thin-skinned baby who wants. He wants people's admiration so bad. I'm like, bro, do what Richard Branson is doing. That motherfucker's on a no clothing allowed island with like every model you know just having orgies or whatever the fuck ethical ones i think allegedly you know not like little saint james but like nobody talks about him nobody talks about him because he, he's a billionaire he's just fucking full head of hair looks kind of good for his age you know what i mean he's just having fun you can be that way too same with fucking warren buffett i'm sure he enjoys couponing or whatever the fuck he does that dude's weird but like he, Elon Musk has to be the meme guy. He has to be the Reddit guy. And it's just like that level of like attention seeking. It, you're a content creator. You don't see that. You don't like, you don't find that to be like grimy. I, I think it's hilarious. That's why I like, I like side towards the comedy shit of it. I read a lot of his shit and I'm like, but, this is funny. But he's like, he's so, he's not a troll in the unique, interesting or new way. That's what's offensive to me. Cause I troll a lot. I fucking love saying shit that pisses people off. I'm a big fan. You know, sometimes I get death threats for it. But yeah. um, you think he's a troll in the, like regurgitation of like already existing yeah, trolly he's not, stuff? He's not. He is not a good troll. He's not redefining the genre at all. He's not putting up any new anything new that I haven't seen. I before. guess the reason why I like it personally is because he has so much power and wealth, and and he's that guy that he's. But he does it still. Yeah, that's, no, that's what I appreciate it. about it. That's that's his shtick. Yeah, he's like, oh, he's just like me, but he's like, but he's not, and he is desperately trying to appear that way when he's not. Like the the Twitter purchase is a perfect example of this because like he said he was gonna buy it, he thought he could troll his way into like you know giving a really high fucking number for Twitter, and then the Delaware courts were like, no motherfucker, you have to buy it now. Like yeah. you signed the dotted line. Because people still maintain this position that like Elon Musk bought Twitter for one reason or the other. He didn't want to buy Twitter. He went to court to not buy Twitter. He lost the court case. He lost the lawsuit. So he was forced to buying Twitter. Factually. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 
and and yet but that's marketing you didn't even fucking think about that yeah. you, you don't even think about that when you when you uh think about elon musk he got owned he was forced to buy twitter and every single action he's taken since then has just been like fuck it like if i had to buy this shit then fuck it i'm just gonna take it all down with me and now his tesla stocks are fucking tanking his tesla stock is uh crashing investors are literally like bro stop fucking tweeting because he's alienating his main fan base of tesla enjoyers which are rich liberals by behaving this way by being like uh, fire fauci are my pronouns or whatever which is like it's so low level trolling like oh she was great but they like, see that's what Fuck. i'm saying come on why are you you're a content creator you should demand more. Like you should, <laughs> you should be a, you should be the fucking gourmet at like. I think content. because I think because for so long on Twitter it was the opposite. It was just all the opposite. It was like anything you said or against any of that stuff was just like misinformation, misinformation. It, everything was opposite. It was funny. He's saying a lot of misinformation. He keeps getting clapped on his own platform. But, but like, I don't, I don't mind trolling. Uh, like Trump did such a good job of fucking Fuck, trolling. Man, like yeah. he was funny. Like at least he he had his good moments, you know what I mean? Um, Elon does not have that pizzazz. He does not have that charisma. He doesn't have that stage presence, you know. And he desperately wants it. And Damn. and that's what like I see that kind of similar to Andrew Tate. I see that and I'm like, ugh. Like how did how does how does no one else see this? Like, what do you think is gonna happen with Twitter? Genuinely, because I think it's gotten better, bro. I think it's gonna fizzle out eventually. Really? Yeah, I think like right now the well, first of all. Do you, are you familiar with what happened today? Because every day there's a new thing. The what? So he like t so there was the doxing saga, right? Which was bullshit. Yeah, I, like, that I, wasn't I fucking that. doxing. But like he also took down like reporters that were covering the story. Like he falsely claimed it was doxing. Then he took down reporters that were covering the story, and everyone was like, "What the fuck? You can't do that. That's crazy." And then he was like, "No, I can." And then and, and then like everyone was like, "That's ridiculous. Like you're." You can't give the game away as a fucking billionaire. You can't literally be like, this is my toy. I'm breaking it. If you don't want to, I don't want to play with you anymore. You can't do that. Because like, then, you know, EU and regulations are going to fucking come in and governments are going to be like, no, actually you can't do that. There's antitrust laws uh, or there's like certain protocols that you need to abide by. So he did that. He saw a lot of people also recognizing that he was being like a petulant little man child, like an entitled kid. The rich kid at the fucking playground was like, I'm taking my ball and I'm leaving. Like he literally did that. And um, you're talking about because of his actions of banning the people. Yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, well, I can ban him because they're doxing me. And then people were like, no, that's not. I mean, a lot of people were like, yeah, you're right. They are doxing you like yourself. And then plenty more people were literally saying, well, that's not doxing. Everyone's fucking flight. Everyone's flights are public, bro. You just want your private jet to be private on top of that. Like you want special privileges for your private jet. Special privileges that like Jeff Bezos doesn't even fucking have. You know what I mean? Like that's crazy. Um, but like Jeff, Elon, you know, it's like. I mean, fuck Jeff Bezos. He's my <laughs> boss. But like, even though I think arguably he looks better than Elon Musk does. Damn, decided, this is we're doing like a physique breakdown on him? He decided. Yeah. He decided, fuck the fuck the hair. He was like, nah, fuck it. I'm bald. And he went, he went yacked. Yeah, he definitely, he's definitely he, on gear. Yes, 100%. Definitely. 100%. Yeah, Jeff Bezos His definitely on so gear. so busted too. He's so fucked up. He looks like a mutated demon. He's like, uh, uh. he's got Sylvester Stallone face. Bro, he's definitely At his on age. Gear. It's crazy. Anyway. Yes. <sighs> please don't fire me, Mr. Bezos. I love you. Um, but. Yeah, fucking, he did that shit. People got mad at him. And then he was like, because he's so desperate for attention, he can't even be like the petty tyrant without like trying to win, like vie for the affection of everyone, for the masses. So he tweeted like, should I unban the people even though they doxed me? And then he put like a poll up and everyone was like, yes, unban them now. Like that was winning. So then he was like, oh, fuck. Uh, this poll had too many options. I saw and that. then he and did he another a Twitter poll where he was yeah. like, should I unban these people even though they want to wish harm to my children and myself and, you know, they want to kill me? <laughs> and then people still were like, yeah, you, you should unban them, actually. So then he unbanned them. <laughs> and then today uh, he kept banning some other people. He, he banned Taylor Lawrence, who's a very controversial journalist for many people. I know. I know her personally. I think she's fine. I don't know why. The, I mean, I get why people fucking hate her, though. She does a lot of good reporting. Pisses a lot of right-wing people off. Um, she banned Taylor Lawrence for no reason. This is a WAPO journalist. You know what I mean? Taylor, 
literally deletes all of her tweets. So for this reason, so she's never in violation of like any Twitter rules or anything like that. She still got banned. And everyone was like, why the fuck did you ban this person who privated their account, who doesn't even fucking have like any of their tweets. And he just came up with a bullshit reason. And then on top of that said, you can no longer link your Instagram on your Twitter. Well, I saw that. You can no longer link your Mastodon, your fucking truth social. Link like, tree. Yeah. You can no longer put your link tree. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? That's like not the internet. You're doing the opposite of what the internet is supposed well, to be And doing. then I saw something about it. He was saying how like you, you can't, it can't be like done a ton or some shit. But I don't understand that's that. I don't bullshit. understand that. That's bullshit. He's well, that's just, what I'm saying. I don't understand. I mean, I'm being honest. Like I saw that and I'm like, okay, this, because the other platforms do essentially like, for example, if I go on Instagram and I, and I put like, follow my Snapchat, my shit's, it's like, they're down regulating the fuck yeah, out of that. No, like it's sure. not going to get the engagement it could. Or if I link out to like a, a sale on like a raw yeah. gear or some shit, if I link out to YouTube, it's going to get way less views. Yeah. So other platforms do that. I guess what I was trying to understand, like I saw his reasoning and it was like, but no one bans you for it because Twitter does it too, to a certain degree, but they never ban you for it. That's insane. Yeah. And saying that like, you're, <laughs> we're trapping you into this website. We don't want you to go anywhere else. Like that's insane. You can't fucking do that. So people got pissed off at that. So then he tweeted again. Uh, he tweeted another poll where he was like, I'm sorry, going forward, I'm never going to do anything without asking people in a dem democratic fashion ever again. And then he immediately tweeted out a poll. It's literally just him going, do you like me? Yes or no. You know what I mean? Do you want me to die? Yes or no. He's like a fucking 14 year old kid. He's literally, he tweeted a poll where it was like, should I step down from Twitter? Yeah, I saw that. Yes or no. And it's fucking yes. Everyone's saying yes. You're dealing with trolls like 90% of the time. That's the whole platform. Twitter is beautiful because you can tell a rich motherfucker like myself sometimes to kill himself. That's <laughs> what people use the platform for. You have to be fucking mentally ill to use the platform. I know because I'm mentally ill and I use the platform all yeah, the fucking time. I love the platform. Stop. Yeah, I love it too. Yeah. I love that shit. There's nothing more rewarding than fucking getting getting the pitchforks out and like making a rich fucking asshole feel like <laughs> shit. Okay. It makes you feel good. And I've been on the receiving end of that shit, non fucking stop. And I still maintain the position that it feels fucking good to own someone like that. You're like, fuck yeah. Their life is still going to be awesome. Yeah, it's still regardless. Great. It's still you know? great. And so is my life. Uh, but like, it feels good. It feels rewarding. That's the whole purpose of the fucking platform. And this dumbass is out there be being the main rich asshole uh, trying to desperately be like, please like me, please I, like me. Some of the some of the polls, I'm like, I don't understand. I mean, but I feel like I feel like he's just fucking with people at this point. No, he he is so fucking. But what if? Because like I post he's shit, losing his. Mind. I post shit sometimes, and I'm like laughing to myself. You don't think he's just like? <laughs> you don't I think, think he's laughing? You like it, and you laugh when it hits in your target audience. When it goes beyond your target audience and people start owning you, then you're like, oh, fuck, this sucks, kind of. <laughs> I've been on both ends. I see what you're saying. And I he's been saying. getting obliterated. Like, the entire platform has been, like, screaming at him. And the people that are in his pocket, the people that are, like, fighting for him, his dick riders, are getting smaller and smaller as days go by. Like, even people in, like, Silicon Valley that, like, you know, proselytize for Elon, that, like, deified him. Like, he's losing a lot of people. He... One of the fucking guys from like uh, one of his like main tech like supporters from the jump earlier today tweeted like, I don't know what's going on with this platform, but here's my link tree. You know, like one of this was like a tech guy. I forget his name, Peter something, um, who was like a, been an avid supporter of Elon going to Twitter from the jump. He got banned because he posted his fucking link tree. Like he's like losing people with the yeah. With these I don't, actions. That, that one I really don't understand. He's losing people with these actions, and uh, that's what happens when that's what happens to all sometimes brilliant and talented uh, men that uh, develop a a close circle of yes men. If you can't have people that push back on your mania on your dumb shit, you're you're not gonna thrive. You're not gonna succeed. Yeah. So many greats, so many goats have turned into fucking a, a shell of what they once were, whether it be Dave Chappelle, in my opinion, who I like idolized, you know, who I you thought think was Dave Chappelle. I think he's also, unfortunately, like I still, I still love Dave Chappelle. Like I can't let go of his like old oh, material, man. but I the think Chappelle like, show. 
No, that's what I'm saying. God. No, he's brilliant. Like his fuck the Chappelle show. His stand up yeah, was yeah. incredible. Like, and there's still so many really good bits in there. But like, he's he's ultimately become like an old man who who does not like any kind of pushback whatsoever. When he just like can't respond to that, in a, in a he can't respond to any kind of criticism with like uh with with the maturity that someone who is self assured would normally respond. And I know that I get criticized all the fucking time, oftentimes for dumb shit, you know? Yeah. And I pop off sometimes too in my weak moments, but like, uh, you know, you just got to snap out of it and get back in the pocket and do what you're good at. You got to fucking go back into what you're good at. Yeah. Right. You can't stay in there. You can't constantly stay duking it out. If you do that, if you're constantly fucking engaging with people, uh, engaging with people who do not want to, uh, who do not want to see you succeed in any meaningful way, yeah. even if you're in the wrong. And I think Dave Chappelle is in the wrong for like a lot of the transphobic stuff. Um, even though he has like some funny bits, uh, even re in regards to the trans experience, which you can make fun of in a funny way, but I don't think Dave was doing that. Um, he just, he's like too stuck on that. He's, so you he's weren't watching one the special. Note. You weren't. No, of course I, I was. Okay. Okay. No, I don't know. One of those fucking people who's like, Oh my God, I can't watch it. I'm, for, I'm, it doesn't impact me personally. Yeah. Like, even if I don't like it, I can still watch it without it being like truly damaging. Do you me. think, do you think I get really curious now? Do you think people though have grown too sensitive just in general? I think everyone's sensitive. Everyone's always sensitive. It's not like a left or right thing though. It's yeah, just yeah. like right. No, no, so I, fucking sensitive. I think everyone's super sensitive. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I wish people would like shut the fuck up a little bit and like let people enjoy things more. I say that all the fucking time. Um, and I think people make the impact of the content we consume far greater than it actually is. Yeah. But that also comes from a place of powerlessness. You care about some fucking random TV show and, and its cast members or like what the random TV show's episode said because you understand that like changing the system is literally almost impossible. You're like, you're looking at the system. You see that like systemic racism exists. Okay. You experience it every fucking day. You know it down to your fucking core and the individual actions also accompany that systemic attitude because everyone is socially conditioned into believing these things. So that sucks. You're living with the that individual every actions of other people around you. Yeah, or? Individual actions of other people around you, yeah. like the way you're perceived by others. You know what I mean? Like all that stuff is learned behavior. Okay. You just learn it. And we are all products of this system. We are not above propaganda and we are not above like, uh, you know, the things that we learn from our parents, the things that we learn in the textbooks, the things that we saw over and over again, reinforced. Like it's, it takes a long time to, and I'll use an Andrew Tate reference here to, to truly be above the matrix. Cause he, that motherfucker is definitely not trying to escape the matrix. <laughs> okay. Um, but it, it does take, uh, it, it does take a lot of hard work to like, re you know, reconstruct, uh, and, and try to understand how society should operate, how, how society should work. But, um, having said all that, you see how, you see how powerless you are to make this change. Right. Cause like, what the fuck you think the Democrats give a shit about black people? Fuck no. They're going to like wear the Kente cloth and kneel and be like, Oh my God, George Floyd, we love you. Uh, you know, sorry you died. And then they're going to give money to the fucking police departments and, and run on giving more money to the police departments and not actually like making sure that these fucking pieces of shit actually like, you know, are held accountable every now and then, uh, it, it, like the ones that are really bad. I'm talking about like right. not all cops. Sure. But we don't do that. And, and you see how powerless you are in, in the face of all of this. So where do you turn your crosshairs on to content, an area that you can like kind of make change in. It's not meaningful in the grand scheme of things, but ultimately there is a little bit of change there. So it makes you feel good. Like you did something. And that's what I think a lot of people do. Uh, that's why I think a lot of people also like wear what kind of fucking content that they're watching or what they're consuming on their, on their sleeves. Like as though it like says something about you. Oh, yeah. you like that TV show? Well, I like this TV show. And that's that says a lot about me. And, and that again, that is, and I mean, if you want to learn more about this, Grom, she talks about this a lot, but that comes from a place of powerlessness. We have no way of like changing the material, the underlying material conditions. So we try to like shift culture, thinking that shifting culture a little bit is going to genuinely move the material conditions, not realizing that the material conditions are the reason why culture is the way it is. Um, that's how it works for the most part. 
We live in a white supremacist uh, society that has white supremacist fundamentals. Our founding fathers owned slaves. You know what I mean? It's just, that is the truth. And they were not exactly too fond of like letting black people vote or have a say in the process. That's pretty impactful. You know what I mean? It was a driving force in the economy for hundreds of years. That's pretty impactful. There was a lot of uh, remnants of that attitude that's still baked into our system. Sure, we abolished slavery. Sure, you know, we had the civil rights movement. But there's still plenty of scars that have not healed and plenty of material restitution that has not been afforded to people in this society. That's just one aspect, by the way. There's a, a million different things we can talk about. Yeah. But like, that's part of the reason why people are like, oh, that shit sucks. I can't do anything about it. So I'm just going to make sure that like, you know, at least there's like a, a more diversity in the TV shows. And if yeah. there isn't, or like someone says something like uh, that's stupid and, and uh, sometimes racist, like I'm going to get fucking super mad at that. And I'm going to make sure that that, that person is punished. So you think the sensitivity is spawned out of the fact that people feel helpless? Yes. Yeah. That's where it comes from because, because you can get capitalist corporations that respond. So, so back if to you the make thing, up enough stink around an issue. Yeah. Yeah. So back to the thing I was, yeah, I get that. Cause then they had, they're kind of forced to make some sort yeah, of change. I mean, Walmart will throw up the black fist to say black lives matter and then still buy police cruisers for every fucking town that they work in. You know what I mean? They but police cruisers don't necessarily mean that they're against black lives. No, but black lives matter is quite literally about like making sure that police forces are accountable across the board in this country an accountability that has not happened an accountability that is a necessary thing. And by the way, this doesn't mean that like and BLM protesters or BLM leaders, not the ones that you see on television or not the organization. Of course, I'm talking about like actual black people on the streets. Like they'll tell you cops that kill black people willy nilly will also, you know, they kill white people too. They kill more white people than they kill black people. Right. Like, uh, and if a cop is willing to kill a black person, a poor black person, they're definitely willing to kill. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, a cop that is willing to kill a poor white person, they're definitely willing to kill a black person. You know what I mean? They get that. So that's why it's like it's about police accountability across the board. It's not just for black people. It's never been about that. Yeah. It's just that it's a uh, it's disproportionately targeting black communities in the way that policing works and that devastating outcome. Yeah. So back what I was saying to earlier, I mean, kind of in response to this, like, what do you think is the way that this actually gets fixed then? Like to, to not desensitize people, obviously, because that's not the point, like to get people to be less sensitive or to get people to feel like there's a different way that they could actually make change. Because how does the change actually happen just from like more conversation? Because no, the problem is like the conversation helps. is just it's just causing more friction. I don't think conversation in and of itself is going to change it. I think like. I think it's it's slowly but surely uh, engaging in community organizing, and and creating like um, creating both organizations within the system and outside of the system, um, to to uh, to help people in your immediate circles. Yeah, and also ultimately create a network where you can uh, demand change and actually have the backing, the backing of the people. Um, to be able to make this kind of change. I don't think we'll ever be able to like change the system with a top down solution by like getting Bernie Sanders in the office. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. And because there's no way someone like Bernie Sanders is never going to be able to be president in the current way that the structure is, is designed. Like the media would never let that happen. They call that old man who's like spent his entire life fucking fighting for, you know, women's rights, fighting for black people who got arrested uh, during the civil rights movement back in the day, they called them fucking racist. You know what I mean? Like that shit's crazy. Like, yeah. And, and it, it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, we're all so susceptible to propaganda. We are not above. No yeah, one is above the, uh, propaganda and we don't recognize that. Yeah. That's the worst part in all this though. To me yeah. is just the, the echo chambers that just created created through like algorithms and like even now just on social like how it's just so like you watch more of this, you get more of this, you believe just more of the same. Yeah, exactly. And it feeds you that same shit, which yeah. is why going back to Andrew Tate, I thought it was really funny when TikTok was like responsible for his fame and also responsible for like way worse shit on that platform than what Andrew Tate has said. And we'll yeah. say they were like, oh, we did it. Yeah, we did it. We defeated misogyny. <laughs> like get the fuck out of here, dude. Yeah, there's a lot of it's that. That's the thing when I, I think during all that time, like obviously there's there's shit that has said that was fucked but it's like there's so much other shit on that platform and just social media in general that's like it's also fucked 
it's terrible. Yeah. yeah, no. And and the worst is like the algorithm, the structure of TikTok and all these other holy fuck, we've been talking for like eight hours. I didn't yeah, even my realize bad. what the fuck. Yeah, the, I can just keep going, my bad. <sighs> we could cut it. I got a message an hour ago for for dinner. Dude, my bad. No, it's all good. It's fine. Well, we'll wrap it up, but let's finish this last thought on, yeah. on Tate. Um, there is, uh, yeah. We the, were talking the, about the, the algorithms. The, the structure and the algorithms that yeah. like are, are are created so you spend more time on the platform are also breaking our fucking brains yeah. in, in like really significant ways, I think. Not like real time happening. Yeah. It's really happening. I mean, here, I'll, I'll say it like this. Look, I would come, I, people will criticize me for this take. I like China more than the average American person. I love high speed rail. I think that's fucking dope. Okay. But having said that, TikTok is a Chinese app, it's stealing a lot of, uh, you know, it's spyware, it's stealing a lot of information. Everyone's really upset about it, you know? TikTok's breaking people's brains. Okay. Well, they have it in China. They have a Chinese TikTok. It's, yeah. It's yeah. Completely except different. Those motherfuckers, the children don't get to watch TikTok in China. So why is it that the Chinese app is very different? In, in America, but the same version uh, of the app in China is like, you know, forcing you to watch museum videos. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> what, what's that about? Yeah, I don't I'm get just it. saying maybe maybe we should change the way that our our apps work a little bit or yeah. maybe we should change the way social media works a little bit because like that control is always going to be there. You can either control it in a way that like creates more positive engagement, positive interactions and and, you know, uh, better experiences yeah. Or you can, you know, not control it and have someone else uh, feed your children poison. Yeah, it's fucking it's insane, man, because I know that to be true as well. But let's get let's get out of here. I know you I know you had some shit you had to do. I appreciate you coming on sincerely. And yeah, uh, yeah man, I'm, I'm impressed by just the fact that you're able to continue doing this shit. Your audience is going to fucking hate this episode. I feel like I don't care. I'm just letting well, you know. I? Listen, all I all I ask for is is charitability. You know what I mean? You might have heard a lot of stuff uh, on the internet, and you know how it is. It's just the uh, people want to people want to put you in a category that is like easily definable. Yeah. So then you are like easily defeated. They're like, oh yeah, well that guy, he's socialist, but he's rich. Some I mean, like yeah, but, I mean, here's the thing, man. Like, look, I, I can't even sit here and say I agree with all your takes and everything you've said. I mean, even shit you've said about me, but like, I wouldn't be the person that I want to be if I didn't sit and have conversations with other people who didn't necessarily align with exactly what I believe that would, I wouldn't, the thing we're talking about trying to create a, pl a place where it's like things could actually progress and get better would never happen if pe people weren't able to even do this kind of stuff. Yeah. It's like I it just agree. wouldn't. I mean, I, I talk to people I disagree with all the time too. Yeah. I, I think it's normal and healthy to something I tell my, something I tell my audience all the time is like, it's fine to fucking not always agree even with your friends. Like, Please, holy shit, be normal, you know? Your politics, even though politics is a structure, uh, changes our lives dramatically. Yeah. And and truly impacts our lives. And I know I have a lot of privilege. So, like, for me to say this is a little bit different than, like, I don't know, a trans person with a transphobic individual. I'm not saying, like, be friends with transphobic people. But politics defines our lives in very meaningful ways, and it's impossible to escape it. It's just, you know fucking potholes that you were talking about that's politics yeah like the way that our taxes are distributed that's politics um but having said that when you're making like normal you know when you're developing normal relationships with people um you should still try to be as charitable as possible in the real world when you're having a conversation with humans because ultimately like you could probably get people to understand your position a little bit better by just, you know, taking the time out and describing it without immediately being combative. Yeah. You know, I know you can't do that in like a debate structure and I don't like debates anyway for that reason, but you definitely can, um, you know, make better arguments and, and truly get people to see your side of things. Um, as long as you maintain that charitability and you're open-minded yeah, and want to talk to people that have different opinions. All about perspective and being willing to just see someone else's. Cause like that's, there's no one right way. And yeah, that's all it comes down to. But I appreciate you coming, man. Genuinely, yeah, no, thanks for having taking me. the time. You, you're fucking. You keep crushing it. If you ever need me and you need help, whatever, yeah, I'm more than happy. You, we'll have you on the pod. I don't talk about politics on my podcast, but you know, we'll have you on the podcast uh, soon, hopefully. I appreciate you coming, man. Uh, thank you, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're on iTunes, Spotify. Drop a good review, all that good stuff. Drop a like, and uh, yeah, man. Thank you so much. For yeah. Real.
Thanks for having me. Absolutely. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Hasanabi every day. That's where I'm live at. And you got you got Instagram, you have Twitter. Yeah, Instagram is Hassan D. Piker, Twitter at Hassan the Hun, as long as I don't get banned. Elon, you you on Snapchat, you don't really use it that actively. No, I don't, I don't use Snapchat. I Bro, deleted it, actually. Yo, it's crazy. They're, like, monetizing it now, I, like, heavily. I, I don't know. Yeah. You wouldn't do it? I just don't have time. Yeah, that's fair. I'm on TikTok, too, but, you know, I have an editor deal with that instead. Nah, I get you. Cool. Yeah. All right, right on, man. So, we're out of here. I love you guys. Um, the boys are looking tired right now. You guys are looking late. tired. <laughs>